All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's finish up the clouded Kokoro. You are Kokoro. Start the stream right. with a we bunch have, of yelling. We have our uh, Japanese man in uh, jail. That's right. Ooh. Yeah, we have oh, our was Japanese. Was I in Audible? <sighs> okay. I gave her a southern voice. That's right. I have considered the defense counsel's request for a further summation examination of the jury. And I have determined that the court must uphold the defense's judicial right to this procedure. Oh, that's right, because we had to wait to, to whether or not the judge would accept it or not. Mm -hmm. So, counsel, you will now proceed with your second summation examination. Two and one? Oh my god. <laughs> I presume the jury is ready, Mr. Foreman. We are, my lord. Very good. In that case, I must ask each of you now to state clearly and concisely for the court. The grounds on which you find the defendant guilty of this crime. I mean, I gotta remember my voices. Yes, yeah, so oh. I. Oh! <sighs> the jurors' contentions. The, Q, the accused left behind evidence at the scene, didn't he? Those three books of his. Uh, you got something Jacuse. really close to the microphone. Yeah, take that. If there is some novel alternative explanation about how the victim was stabbed, I might reconsider. Even if the woman was throwing books, it can't be related to this crime if the window was closed, can it? Nary me, it was only a little book. Hardly life-threatening, even with a direct hit. Look, I just want to get this over with. I don't bring... Uh, if I don't bring some pay tonight, I'll be tidy bit of trouble. Come here, Kurit. We had a fire at home a while ago. It gave me the sneezes. What the fuck? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> <laughs> you should get those two to give more information. Because that has nothing to do with this case. Both of them. Like, nothing to do with it. Look, he has to get home. <laughs> I mean, and the other guy mm. wants to go to work, but that has nothing to do with the case. <laughs> mm, yes, considerably more tangible arguments from all members of the jury this time around, it seems. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's like the same, with one notable exception, of course. My learned student friend was unable to find fault in the previous witness testimony. Super no. Auto Pets has apparently become a very popular game amongst cryptic monkeys. Why? Why do you still have the monkey? <laughs> <laughs> no, the stream doesn't see them. It's just my Steam shows them. Oh. <laughs> shows up on Discord too. Yes. So the court must accept the fact that it was indeed the accused seen fleeing from the scene. The and accused. moreover, fuck this chess. <laughs> <laughs> no one else was even at the scene to commit the crime. Well, if the eyewitnesses are correct, it would seem as if the conclusion is somewhat set in stone. I fail to see how it can be argued any other way. That means I'm afraid that during the summonation examination, it's essential that you establish some other tangible explanation for the facts. But how? What do we even uh, constitute a tangible explanation here? Your mom. Isn't oh. it obvious? <laughs> it's your mom. Who stabbed the woman and how? Those two details are all you need to provide. Simply give us a name and the method by which the attack was conducted. <laughs> and there I was thinking this might be hard. <laughs> but Mr. Narahudo, you will have to do it. Otherwise, this will be... Where the the whoa, ah. otherwise this is really where will be where the trial ends. Wow, I can't read that. Why was that so hard? Ah, <laughs> uh, no pressure then. Sasato Makoto or Mikitoba was having a hard time there. Don't worry. <laughs> That's quite enough preamble. Proceed with the summation examination, please. I presume you are prepared, counsel. Oh yes. My lord. Alright, Ryosuke. Focus your mind now. Slap your face. 
Yep. <laughs> the double slap. The double slap. Clearly, the key to the summation examination. Examination. It's going to be the juror number four, the maid. Or should I say, Mrs. Garrett Deb? Okay, right. Yeah, I'm, it's Garrett now Deb. coming back to me. So basically, she's denying being the wife to Mr. Garrett Deb. Yep. And, uh... The, the whole situation was like... Right before this whole thing happened was the talk about the fire in their home. Yes. yes. So we're trying to basically... Uh, it's been a, it's been two weeks. I don't remember everything. We have a book that disappeared from the Garadub's house on the evening of the incident. Right! The books that were right next to the body. That's what we were talking about. Because they were talking about how he left evidence at the scene of the crime. But it was books that were thrown from the house. Okay. I think. Right. Right. Because it's the lion's yeah. pride. That's what it was. Okay. Okay. And the fourth book found it in, in the victim's hand. There must be a way to link the two. Yes. That's what we have to find. Using every technique I've learned, I've learned in my short career so far. Whatever it takes. Don't forget to keep an eye on Mrs. Garadeb and how she reacts. Even to the things other people say. Oh god, are we gonna do that whole thing while we're talking to the other people now? It'll it'll pop up on there if she has a reaction. Remember that. Yeah. You don't have to constantly go back to her. No, I know. It's just I don't remember having that option to look at all of them while everyone else was talking before. Oh yeah, I forgot the fucking guard and the woman behind them. The accused left behind evidence at the scene didn't need those three books of his. There was some no about how the victim was stabbed and might reconsider. Okay. A window was closed. We don't really have a way to prove I that mean, the window was open. We, we kind of do the book, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, even with a direct hit. Uh, press you. Oh, hold it! Fuck you! Uh. You just want to get the get this over with? How can you sit there and say something like that? A man's future's at stake here. Piece of shit. Well, him and me both, then. Like I said before. Yeah, we haven't had this option to like look at all of them. Yeah, not before. No, this is yeah, this is new. What? I told you already. I'm a day laborer, aren't I? If I don't bring home some readies, uh, readies with me tonight, <laughs> readies. you'll find me uh, floating face down in the Thomas tomorrow morning. Thoms? Thanks. Oh, does he owe money to someone? Uh, oh, to the last guy. Maybe. To the last guy who died. What? <laughs> to the guy that died before. <laughs> you heard me. My missus ain't isn't one to mess about. You know, she can't be fierce. Believe me. Believe you me. I'm looking at you, woman. <laughs> All right. Again, go, go off. I know, I happen. know. I, I did that for dramatic effect. <laughs> Another shining example of a martial bless. Oh, Marital. Then. There's the Where's the end? <laughs> <laughs> what? A situation, like, uh, a situation like this cropped up the other day. It was, well, um... Terrifying. <laughs> I'm actually gonna head out. See you guys. Okay, see you later. Bye, Bye Docker. Do you know? It's funny. I can't quite remember. What'd you get fucking obliterated? Sorry. It was too fighting. That's the thing. I must have been blacked out. I must have blocked out. out. Helpful. I wonder if Mr. Bait. Beat? Bait? Bail. If, if he will ever be dragged into the, into the thing, thumbs. By his scarf. Wow. I really can't read today. I don't. D ignore me. <laughs> don't even go there, Mr. Sato. <laughs> Am I Mr. Sato? Am I? <laughs> there must be some way to jog his memory about this. <laughs> uh, we have to talk wife. to the wife, yeah. She'll <laughs> talk about it, and then he'll be like, oh! <laughs> 
That was what happened. She slapped me. All right, you can wait, juror number six. That way, I don't have to voice you. Oh. I, I accidentally clicked. God. I'm just skipping this. This is all just preamble nonsense. That's the spirit. That's all I talk about. <laughs> no. No. Yes. Hold it. Hold it. But the little book was on fire at the time, was it not? Oh. For flames of love, I'll have you know. There's really no such thing as a loving incendiary bomb. <laughs> Oof. Oh. oh! Oh! Did she oh, just slap him? him? Yeah! Okay, she slapped him again. She did that in the, yeah, did. the last time we played. Well, he brought it upon himself. It's playing with fire to betray a fiery love. Isn't it? Well, don't you agree? Don't look at me like <gasps> that. Oh, um, well, any kind of betrayal is, is certainly a bad thing. Yes. <laughs> Just like how you killed your friend. Oh! <laughs> Yikes! I think, the, I think the argument might even, um, might have arisen out of your misunderstanding, Mrs. Gary Deb. <laughs> never mind. Never you mind that. The point is, we were just having a Java little dispute. Nothing more. <laughs> Stop swiping uh, the guy. The dude. He's dodging it though. Do you see that? He's actually not getting hit. He dodges it. And I won't have any more of these suggestions that I was anything whatsoever to do with this cry. Right. Well, we'll see about that. But what about your uh, juror number five? <laughs> He's a bitch. He doesn't seem to be turning the hair at Mrs. Gary. That's re 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 uh, re relentless onslaughts. Okay, he's actually not touching. He is actually getting slapped. He's like, it's, hmm. almost, it's almost as though he's, he's used to it. What a gentle soul he is. <laughs> it's not, it's not okay. <laughs> she's, she's tiny and innocent. Leave her alone. Alright, well, that didn't look like it jogged anything from him. He didn't get a reaction. That's an old man. Hold it! Hold it! Does that have anything to do with your decisions about the defendant's culpability in this case? Eh? Hey, what's that? <laughs> you have to speak up, lad. <sighs> Why is there always an old dude? An old right. person? <laughs> I mean, technically, there's always an old dude because the judge. <laughs> Judge is like thousands of years old. <laughs> Phoenix, could, you us, right. could you tell us more about the fire? About that fire? It was last winter. My grandchildren baked me a lovely cake on my birthday. Oh, right. Also, completely forgot about this, but the route that was taken from the place, it was theorized that that dude passed out in the middle of the street. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because he went to towards Calabash Road instead, and that's where the other guy passed out. Because near Shnam Street, it was under construction. Yeah. But then people could still pass it, apparently. So. Yeah, that was the thing, was that it, it, people could jump over it or something. Yeah. It was last winter, my grinch. Oh, no, I read, I read that already. I have the mind of a mental... Uh, what? It had 75 candles on the top it did. What a sight to behold it was. Oh, so that's what, that was the fire hassle. You put candles? On a cake? <laughs> what, uh, was, was it some kind of devil worship? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, right, yeah, no, traditions and stuff. Yes. <laughs> dumb, dumb. Of course not! It was an angel cake to celebrate my birthday, obviously! Oh, he looks so upset! He's like, oh. Huh. Seems that's common custom here in Great Britain, Mr. Narahudo. Anyway, I mustered all my puff to blow them out. Only I must have blown wrong somehow. The flames didn't go out, but candles went flying all over the room. Please slap like them. Highly placed candles then. The furniture caught and everything went up. The whole place filled with smoke. Definitely sounds like devil worship <laughs> to me. <laughs> And by the sneezes, I presume you mean a cold, but how did you catch a cold from a fire? What a fiasco it was! The grandchildren, bless them, threw water over me as they tried to put out the flames. 
And then, because the whole room had filled up with smoke, of course, we had to open all the windows to clear it. Ah, uh, <clears throat> that's uh, that that tale is with the one guy, the kid, because he was talking about how it didn't matter because the windows were closed. Yeah, I mean, if there was a fire in the house, you had to open the window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. The biting winter air rushed over me like the devil dancing on my grave. It did. What? Devil worship. <laughs> <laughs> I got a terrible cold from it. Put me in a hospital for a while. I won't forget that birthday in a while. How old am I? Was that yesterday? Might have been yesterday. I knew it was devil bullshit all along. <laughs> but something about this old man's story is playing on my mind for some reason. Oh, oh, it's the oh. candles. Yeah. Or devil worship. Ah, blah, 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 Okay, so do I press it now? Because I didn't—that didn't change anything of his no. words. So maybe I have to press the uh, kid. Oh no! There you go. It did change. Okay, yeah. Pit that with him. Objection! Objection! Oh, Whoa. music stopped. These two jurors statements clearly contradict one another. You bitch. They do. How exactly, Council? I mean, have fun. They're both your voices, too. Oh, my God. Oh, um, I ate Eat chips. chips. <laughs> Eat chips. I'm the detective eating fish and chips. Don't point at me again. I told you, it wasn't me. <gasps> What's that you say? Speak up, lad. Speak up. You're number three. Do you see? Oh, my. See, see, see what, sir? Did you hear Juror number six account for of his birthday celebration last year? <laughs> <laughs> it seems, despite being a lenderer, he was op he, he once opened his window in the middle of the winter. Well, yes, of course, because it was an emergency. I mean, obviously, if the room was filled with smoke from a fire, then you'd be mad not to open the. Oh! <laughs> Exactly. On the day in question, at the time of the incident, there was a fire in the Gary Depp household. And Mrs. Thur Gary Depp, yeah, Gary Depp had the following to say about it. The whole place spilled with smoke. Oh my. Oh, oh. Oh. I, I like this guy's face though. Oh my hat. <laughs> Uh, pursue that. What? Excuse me. Excuse me. Juror number, juror number four. Do you have something to say about that? Oh God, she's going ham on that tea. That's a lot of tea. She has to go pee after this. <laughs> Mrs. Gary Deb. Oh dearie me! What is the meaning of this? How dare you imply that I'm hiding who I really am? It's imperative that you confirm something for the court. So please, it's time to drop the, to press the pretense now. Yes, you got it. that's good. Good job, Jordan. <laughs> what is it? When the fire started in your house that day, did you or your husband open the window? What? Uh, I beg your pardon. What are you insinuating? The room would have been thick with smoke after the carpet and bookcase caught on fire as they did. In a situation like that, it's con inconceivable that you wouldn't have opened the window. Inconceivable. <laughs> and what if we did? Eh? All right then. Yes, you're right. My husband was frantically trying to open the window. Which can't have been easy, since I continue to give him a justly deserved book battering. <laughs> Even though your house was on fire? Oh, you never stop throwing until the anger subsides. It would be terrible bad for, or terribly bad for the nerves to do otherwise. Of, of course, I should have realized. That's a significant step forward, Mr. Narahudo. 
You've managed to establish that the window was open. Nice. <laughs> we simply must have added that. Or we must simply. We simply must have add, have that added to Mrs. Garadev's formal statement. Oh. I'm having a stroke. Oh, interesting. Have okay, that. so we actually pitted the old man with his, but that only brought up the possibility for juror number four to mention it. And now we pit that up against his. Objection! Mm. Stop. He's gonna kill you kind of dick one. Uh, oh, <laughs> mm. oh. I'm, s I'm sorry, but four men of the jury have to eject. That is complete nonsense. Alright, maybe I was wrong. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe now that she has more information for you, now that she's like opened herself now up, press you her. can get more yeah. from her? I'm a banker, don't forget. I'm an educated man, but there's no contradiction as far as I can see. Quite so, Mr. Foreman. I will operate a whimsical attack against the good members of the jury council. I'm oh. sorry, but it made yeah. sense. We just talked was, about the window. There was nothing whimsical about that. About it. Piece of shit. It's very important to listen carefully to every juror, Mr. Narahudo. Oh, yeah, Tyler. Listen carefully, Narahudo. Hey. Then you can decide where the contradictions really lie if there are, if there are any. Look, you can't listen read. It's okay. Listen carefully, Mr. Narahudo. Back. What? Go back. Okay, so his changed too. How about the w other woman? No, I doubt hers. Yeah, not all alternative No, hers is not Oh, okay. yeah, I'm about yeah. being stabbed, okay. About and his stabbed. is uh, left behind uh, the book evidence. Those three books of his. Okay, so... Oh, man, this is... This has several layers. Okay. So I'm gonna... Press you now. Hold it. The fourth book found at the scene of the crime shows very obvious sign of fire damage. And the title of the book is The Lion's Pride. The same title, in fact, as the book that Mr. Gary had told us he had been reading. Oh? Well, I really couldn't say. On the day in question, did you or did you not throw a, a throw at your husband? The copy of the Lion's Pride that has been that he had been reading. Honestly, I she probably oh oh. I did. Hmm. Huh? That was easy. It was the first thing I could lay my hands on, so I hurtled it straight towards him. Oh, straight at him. Okay. Excuse me. And now you come you come to mention it? Yes. Laugh. He was rather in reading it. You're right. Why did you not reveal this information to the court from the onset? Outset. <laughs> oh. She's like punching him harder, I swear. <laughs> but she's gonna fucking eat shit. You was a little mad, you nipponese. I didn't remember. At times like that. You pick up and throw whatever you can lay your hands on, as well as you- as well you know. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Barely noticed I was throwing the book, oh, oh. much less the title of it. Oh. 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 Hmm, Jojo pose. <laughs> look at this face. <laughs> oh, look at her face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Excuse me. This Excuse has me. so many layers. Oh my god. Oh my god. What is it, juror number five? I remember. You know something? I I remember what it was. The memory I blocked out. Ah. Uh, it was listening to what this granny was saying. But it all floating, floating back. Where are you going, granny, sonny? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going, granny? You you cheeky devil! I'm Mrs. Garretem with maid, I'll have you know. The man doesn't even flinch. Please tell me that's not because he's so used to being hit all the time. Probably. It it was about two weeks ago now. I just got back home from after work, like. Put my hand in my pocket for the wages I just earned that day, and I nearly died. 
There was a hole. Every last penny had dropped out. Oh. Ouch. Oh dear. What a disaster. You haven't heard the half of it, boy. Oh. The wife was cutting up some chicken at that time. Uh-oh. I, I could hardly get the words out, but I told her straight. Lost the day wages, love. Uh-oh. Next thing I knew it, the blade was whistling past my ears. Stuck the her into the wall next to me. It did. About an inch deep it uh, an inch deep. Yeah. No words, just terror. <laughs> I could smell it then, you know, the god awful stench of the thalamus. Thames? Thalamus? Thames. I was sure I was going to end up face down in the muddy banks that night. I tell I can tell you. Now. That's a real disaster, isn't it? <laughs> I'll never use the words lightly again. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this. When a woman loses her their rag, they'll throw anything at you. Knives, hatchets, hammers, you name it. Mr. Naruhudo, you mustn't think that <laughs> all women are so short-tempered and unrefined. You throw yeah, us! Just, yeah, what are you the talking first, about? She said no the first thing she sees is us, and she, she throws us. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't thinking that, out loud. Throwing household objects at people is, well, it's so uncivilized. So uncivilized. <laughs> at least tack with honor, like using a bow or the like. What? Yep. What? Shooting at her. <laughs> Who are you going to attack? Never mind. Anyways. Anyway, this man's words. Could rather... Could be rather significant, I think. Alright, we'll come back to the bow and arrow thing later, if I dare. Okay. A woman in rage will hurl almost anything at you. The kitchen knife really brought that home to me. Uh... So do we pit that to, theoretically, her? Yeah. Because she could have thrown anything close to her, like a knife. I only got three chances left. This is so. Okay, uh. YOLO. Yeah, I mean, it, he's bringing up a knife and she's bringing up a knife. It's the only. Objection! Ha! Objection! Nice! Those two statements clearly have a deep and uh, significant connection. Mm. Good grief! You mean they don't contradict each other? Explain, Council, at once. Oh, right, yeah, he don't. didn't say they contradicted each other. He said that they... Joe number two, do you think, perhaps, that this could be such one such novel alternative? Oh, my. <laughs> Whatever do you mean? An alternative explanation as how the victim was stabbed in the back. What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> We demonstrated that the fourth book, The Lion's Pride, that was found at the scene of the crime, originated in Mr. Gary Deb's room on top on the top floor of his house. Therefore, it's equally possible that some other objects besides the book could have found his its way from the Gary Deb household to the street below. Eh? What that now? Well, we called this a while ago, but I don't right? think this is what happened. Yeah, it's too obvious. After all, Mrs. Gary Depp could have thrown any number of different objects at her husband. Isn't that right, Jared number four? Are you insinuating now, you, you little beanpole? Beanpole? How offensive, madam. You're offensive. Oh! Oh. I'm beginning to think that ever since the true origins of this book came to light, Perhaps she had a feeling that this might be what happened. Oh. Now you listen here, you Eastern Gala. Gala? <laughs> As the foreman of this jury, I demand a straight answer. You give us the yarn about some other object making its way down to the house? But what? What is it? It was a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really taking a big gamble here. Yeah, this is basically insinuating somebody else in the jury caused manslaughter. Yeah. yeah. No, not manslaughter, she's still alive. 
life. Oh, right, 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 right. She's in a coma right now, that's right. Right. So what would that actually be? Negligence? Uh, and no, an attempt of murder. But she didn't attempt it. And... It still... It wouldn't be negligence. It, it would be attempted manslaughter, is what it is. Because of the but fact that, that this person also could have died. They're in critical condition right now. But is attempted it's, manslaughter a thing? Oh, um, a woman slaughter. Whatever, George. Shut up. <laughs> I will woman slaughter you. <laughs> that was a bold accusation to make, but I haven't had real evidence to back it up. Oh, woman slaughter you. <laughs> but I'm certain that at the very least, this warrants a further investigation. All right, Mr. Foreman. I tried to explain the defense's theory. The other, the other object that found the ways from the Gary Dev household is seen with kind was the jackknife. Jack knife. I mean, yeah, the murder was there. Take that. Hmm. Jury number four, Mrs. Gary Deb. I'm just gonna look at this knife real Yeah, let's look at it. Is there like a way to tell? I thought there was an in uh, inscription on it, wasn't there? Uh, Open we the also blade. have to remember that uh, the tip of the blade is uh, uh, destroyed. Right, right. I thought there was like a letter or something. I think that no, was from okay, the there was last No, trial. that was that was the Mick, whatever his Mick name Nolan. is. I'm yeah. Mick, yeah. Mick Nugget. You're a nugget. What? What now? I must apologize in advance for this. But I need you to confirm something else for the court. This knife. Have you ever seen this knife before? Uh. 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 Good lord, counsel! What on earth are you doing? That's the weapon that was lodged into the victim's back, man! Mm. Man. <laughs> huh. My lord, remember that when the victim was attacked, Mr. and Mrs. Garrett were in the in throes of an argument? Mrs. Garrett was hurling anything she could at her, her husband. She'd been backed up against the window. Who's been backed up against the window? A window that had been opened to clear the smoke, and through which, uh, through which a book sailed to land at the crime scene. You can't seriously believe that book was found in the victim's grasp. Are you saying that it flew out of the window and across the street to land neatly in her hand? Oh, even my missus hadn't had an aim like that. Hadn't got an aim like that. Yes, I admit, there are many details we don't know yet. Uh, we don't yet understand. But that's the point. That's precisely why. We must not allow this trial to end. Not right now. <laughs> oh my! Sorry. Uh, I'm uh, drinking water. Mrs. Gary Depp, your answer, please. Have you seen this knife before or not? I don't. I don't like this. <laughs> I really don't. Uh. Uh. Um. Uh. uh Her face jiggled. No. Ud. Huh. Did oh. she just die? Uh. Pass so? out. Did she fall on the other point of the knife or something? My lord! Oh. I... I wish to change my decision. Oh, she's so mad. I'm a woman of my word, after all. <laughs> Thank you, madam. Yes, I agree. Certainly didn't see this coming, but... I just don't think it would be right for uh, for this trial to come to an end now, with so many unanswered questions. Mr. Foreman! I have to agree. Not that I think the granny did it, mind. Yes, you know what? I'm not quite happy about this at the moment, either. All, all together now, ladies and gents. We we did it. 
That old guy still thinks he's guilty, though. <laughs> no, he probably didn't. He probably didn't listen. <gasps> oh, congratulations, Mr. Narahudo. Wow, okay, that was interesting, because we didn't actually have to, like, theoretically pit them to get to change their move. We just had to do the whole thing itself. Yes. So, as a result of the defense's summation examination, a number of jurors' leanings have changed. Two jur jurors call guilty against four now calling innocent. The two old people. Innocent. Accordingly, the opinion of this court is divided. And this trial will continue. Man, he is going to be upset. Lord Van Zyke's over there. Innocent. Guilty! Lord Van Yikes! <laughs> now then, Lord Van Zyke's, how does the prosecution wish to proceed? I kill by drinking more. <sighs> Drink away the pain, buddy. <laughs> this trial is rapidly descending into a farce. Mm. You're doing such a crowd again. Oh, wow, he's actually gonna take a sip. Like a corked wine, the first few sips are bitter enough. I will crush this. Fuck this chalice! <laughs> but what follows is so repugnant, it's good for nothing save the gutter. If I may, Lord Van Zeeks. The defense just put forward a credible alternative explanation for what happened. Credible? Is that your considered opinion, Mr. Foreman? The defense's argument is a joke, to which I barely know how to respond. But let me start by insisting that you must all familiarize yourselves better with the relative positions of those places being discussed. What do you mean by that? What's his angle this time? It should already be more than apparent that between the crime scene and the Garadab household runs a rather wide street, Briar Road. Which means that the distance from the Garadab's house to the scene is some, yes, 15 yards. Let me see, 15 yards. 45 feet. That's around 14 meters. 14 meters? Terrors. Oh, that's a little further than I imagine. I mean, you see how strong she is? Yeah, are you fucking kidding me? And as you ladies and gentlemen of the jury rightfully noted as having portentous significance, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, the smoldering book wantonly hurled by the lady of the house traveled some 15 yards to land on the opposite side of the road, neatly between the collapsed victim's fingers and thumb. I point at you. Is that the final conclusion, my learned and deluded friend? Uh, um... And did the jackknife follow a near-identical near trajectory to plunge into the middle of the victim's back? This fantasy is somewhat stretching the notion of having a bad day for the victim, I think. Even those pathetic serialized detective stories have more believable plots. Ah. Critical blow. There's nothing I can say to that. Hmm. That, that's preposterous. Or, that's. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, I can't read today. <laughs> that, that prosecutor loves the sound of his own voice. It happens. Miss Usado. I'm having a bunch of strokes today. Serialized detective stories are pathetic, are they? How dare he? <laughs> Got him. Um, maybe let's pick our battles here. My lord, might I be allowed to speak? No. As judicial assistant, you may speak for the defense. Yes, go ahead. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, yes, fuck him. Ah, uh, the prosecution may consider the idea of fantasy. But what the defense has po postulated. postulated postulated was believable enough to persuade the jury to change its leaning. And as such, the court has a duty to explore this alternative explanation as thoroughly as possible. I just thought of a theory. Hmm. To that end, what so is your the theory? So the theory was, uh, okay. She threw in the book. Uh -huh. She didn't catch it. She hit her on the head, knocked her out. Through the knife, knife just landed near her. 
I... Then the true, the true victor, the true culprit came by, saw the chance, took the knife, stabbed it, put the book in her hand. That's a little far-fetched. Yeah, but... Eh, eh I mean... Because we start to see that wannabe Shakespeare dude. Yeah, yeah and the guy that just... talked to him, too. They mm -hmm. wouldn't just throw characters in for no fucking reason. Exactly. So, being knocked out by the book, I could see, just because of the the woman throwing them. Uh, so you're saying the knife didn't stab her, but that the guy came by, took the knife, and stabbed her. Yeah. Because it is hard to stick a knife in someone's back just by throwing it. Well, and especially if the blade wasn't released and, you know, it being dull. Yeah, yeah. That's how high how it broke. It probably broke on contact with the ground. Right! Actually, that's a good point. But if it wasn't sheathed, how was it, how would it break? That too. I don't think it, it was sheathed, been broken. Though. It could have been broken prior, and then yeah. it's just... That's, it, that's even worse of a condition saying it stabbed her while it got thrown. Yeah. But that's anyways, yeah. Yeah, that's an that's interesting my idea. Aww, yeah. she's crying! Aww. Look what you did to her, Tyler. I, I, I don't think she's crying, I think she's just upset. Jared number four. This is Joanne Garadeb. Must be called to testify and su submit a cr to cross-examination. Saints alive! A cross-examination of a juror! I mean, she's fucking directly associated. This was a stupid decision to put her on the stand. Right. Order! Order! While this is a highly irregular circumstance, it is unprecedented for a member of the jury to be summoned to the witness stand. Objection! Objection! Fuck this bottle! My face! <laughs> <laughs> and unnecessary. Are you okay? Lord, Lord Van Zykes. Oh. Uh. There are already witnesses in the stand whose testimony the defense may further cross-examine. If we learned friends' farce, farcical theory has any truth in it... Uh, you don't have a witness anymore because you knocked him out with that, can that bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> then both a burning book and a jackknife must have flown through the sky before this couple's eyes. Oh. And we must assume they would be able to testify accordingly. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. Hmm. What say you, witnesses? <laughs> yes, sir! Constable Ro uh, Rolly beat reporting for duty, sir! Oh, I like this music. Oh. Well, good morning, officer. Sorry for dozing off until now. Sir! I haven't slept for a month, and I count on the villain who's appeared on my beat, Sa. Oh, they are so heroic. The in bobbies. <laughs> oh! Patricia, Patricia, my darling, I've been neglecting you for but no more. Oh, Riley, my hero, you make me swoon. <laughs> Very well. I hereby reject the defense's request. <laughs> oh, she's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> and order the witnesses in the stand to testify again. State forthwith before the court any details pertaining to the defense's alternative explanation of events. Yes, sir! <laughs> <laughs> You're having way too much fun with this character, Jordan. I like and I like love him. it. Look at him, he's like, ma. <laughs> Right. He reminds me of Roxas. I don't know why. <laughs> this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Gary Dad, believe me. A London Bobby is good for his word. You see, sir, the window on the top floor of Gary Dad's house and the top hind casements. The top hinge casement? Casements? Casements, yeah. Yeah, okay. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out the window, we would have seen it. I did leave the scene to go fetch help, but my trusty Raleigh was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for that moment, sa. Nothing strange to report on that floor, but I'm not front, sa. 
杀。Well, this is quite startling. Top hinged casement windows. That detail was not in the police report, constable. Oh. Ah, yes. Ah, uh, sorry about that. I must have been a little drowsy. <laughs> you cannot excuse your sins with drowsiness every time, constable. Oh. No, sir. <laughs> um, sorry, but what exactly is a top hinge casement window? Basically, the window opens, pointing like downwards. And you. You cannot excuse your ignorance with such trite remarks, my learned friend. Nibble friend. Of course. Sorry. I found it, Mr. Narahudo. Cast your mind back on the window in Mr. and Mrs. Garadev's room. Alright, I'll try. Time to remember the past. Oh, no. So the window opens in order to allow air to circulate inside the house. Yeah, no, I was wrong. But as a top top hinge casement window, it swings open along the upper edge, you see. I'm glad you've rectified your ignorance. A casement window. A casement window's most prominent feature is its stay. A metal bar which prevents the window from being opened beyond a certain point. It prevents it open- it prevents its opening? This is all news to me. Absolutely, uh, absolutely correct, sir. In other words, if a book or knife were to, uh, were to have been thrown through the open window, It would have clattered against the pane and fell in straight down to the pavement below. Well, I see. Sure am, yeah. uh, no. Then how did the book get all the way to the other side of the street? You see Again, the problem so then. Good. Your education in Windows is complete. <laughs> there was never any possibility of either the book or the knife traveling fifteen yards over the road. I point at you. That is, unless the window pane had been shattered. Something we we've discounted already. That can't be! Critical blow. You see that, Raleigh? That young Japanese man just collapsed into agony. <clears throat> oh, yes, my darling. I saw it. I saw how he crumbled before me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why are we related to each other all the fucking time or shit like this? Right? <laughs> oh, oh, Riley, you're so amazing. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> he does too. He's like, fuck this. How does that happen? I haven't even started the cross examination yet, and he's already, he's already my, um, and yet already my argument's been destroyed. Counsel, if you could drag yourself upright again, the court awaits your cross-examination. Yes, sir. Uh. <laughs> My lord. Oh, good. Another desperate situation. Yeah, this is not uh, too good right now. Right. I, I did not see anything directly, uh, like, against it, so... <laughs> I'll fucking press it, just because you press everything. Hold it! How can you say that for certain? Ah, very good question, sir. <laughs> and the answer... Is this! It has the noble found, uh, founding principles of the force written on the... On it as a reminder to all of us policemen of the... On our sworn duty. Oh my god. Huh. Shown us that before. Oh. He should have. Excuse me. Excuse me now. Uh huh. He should have. This, he should have said before, didn't he? He did. I have a lot of fucking lines. Back off. Did he? <laughs> I can't say. I remember. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. Did. Uh, the patrol is straight the line in town, uh, and uphold the peace of, of the common man. And what's the job of all? It's what's the job all about? Uh, and that, that is why I can't stand here today besides my long-suffering wife and tell you a Bobby's good for his word. 
can. You said can't. Can't. <laughs> By rubbing my tired eyes, admittedly. Sock! <laughs> You're so manly. Is he? Of course I am, my darling Patricia. <laughs> what oh, the Pat. Oh, uh, uh, Raleigh. <laughs> I'm gonna hurl. No. I already no. hurled. No, this is what I meant. <laughs> I've already hurled. <laughs> it's all over my desk already. <laughs> I mean, how can you say for certain that the case was nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Gary to this case? Tyler, Tyler, I have bad news. I hurled on our cat. Our cat's now covered in vomit. Nice. <laughs> well, he needed a bath anyways, but it's on you now. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I see, Sa. You should have said so earlier, Sa. Sa! I did. <laughs> yes, well, so could you answer the question? That was a waste of time. <laughs> Good job, Tyler. <laughs> Absolutely, stop! I will answer to the fullest of my ability, stop! There's a surprising reason why Mr. and Mrs. Gary that domestic dispute can't be related to this case. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Raleigh, shut up! Oh, oh, he actually is saying something. Oh, but before I get to, into that, stop, just one thing. Uh-oh. Yes? I very much like you to, uh, mm, I very much like you and all your countrymen to understand the Great Britain institution of Scotland Yard. So I hope you take it back some tales of us London bobbies and how we uphold our guiding principles. Some tales oh, of us London bobbies and how we I guess he's going to give us like a history of them. <laughs> oh no. Maybe? I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only just arrived here. Oh no, he was asking, he was asking us to like... To speak good tales when we go back home. <laughs> oh, Raleigh. <laughs> so, uh, to that end, Sa, I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for your per per perusal. Per perusal. Uh. But I must warn you, you won't be able to get through it without shedding a few tears. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try. We oh! 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 I guess it wasn't a waste of time. Huh. A small folding wallet that identifies London Bobbies and contains the rules of conduct to which they must adhere. Read that and see if there's yeah. any information we can get from yes. it. Yes, yes, Sa. You see, Sa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eh. Yeah, take a look at it. Item one: A policeman will strive to preserve the peace within his allotted beat. Item number two: yeah. A patrolling officer is expected to walk 20 miles around his beat yep. every day for the furtherance of community relations. Yep, I mean, uh, Luigi said that. Uh, Metropolitan police. Re wait, 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 wait. What's this? Principles of policing, and then the Metropolitan Police Regulations. Any crimes fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. So, okay. So, but this is this didn't happen on his beat. No, it was this, that was his beat. No, his beat somewhere else. Hmm. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, because this was his time off because he was gonna go um, to the station to meet up with his wife so that way he could change, and then this happened. Oh yeah, no, yeah, he was one of the witnesses. He was just there. Yeah. Right. So. I mean, this doesn't necessarily so, say anything bad, because I mean, he, otherwise he was just helping, helping yeah, with he, investigation. But it's not that he—he he technically wasn't supposed to. He's just—he's literally just a witness. Yeah. He's there as a witness, not as a policeman. Okay, interesting. Windows on the top floor of the Caridip's house are top hinge casements. Hold it! Press Hold it! Because who knows when I get more fucking shit from it. By which you mean you don't open fully. <laughs> Is that correct? Yes, sir! They, they're just... Uh, hmm. They're just there to allow a bit of air through the house, you see. So they restrict it as how much they open. I think it's like a safety thing, though, isn't it? Like, that's the reason why they kind of did that. Yeah. So that way people couldn't just crawl through them or something, or fall like, out yeah, of them. Yeah, it's for, um... I was, when I was in Europe, I had a couple windows like that. It's for people on higher levels to not accidentally fall out of the higher level. Yeah, okay. But to still get airflow. Mm-hmm. 
because Europe and other countries are very different from us. They normally would have windows that slide open to the side or completely just flat flushed up. Gotcha. Um, we only have windows that just half open, essentially. And therefore, anything thrown out of the window from inside the room would simply strike the pane and fall to the street directly below. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. Here is the location where objects would have fallen. Alright, how about were, this? Weren't they on the other side? Weren't they around there? No, yeah, they, they were, were there. Oh, were they? Yeah, I they were on the they other were... side of the street. I yeah, they, they were, were on, on the other side of the street. Yeah. What, okay, here's my new theory. Okay, ready? When she threw the book and, and knife, it boomeranged upwards again <laughs> and smacked her. <laughs> oh my god, you're genius. I knew it. Hmm, yes, directly opposite the scene of the crime, on the other side of the rather wide road. Oh, sorry, I was- I was broken. But it had been so hard for somebody to mention this top hinge casement thing before. Yes. Sa. <laughs> well, I have another question for you, con uh, constable. Yep. Uh, what is it? Mm -hmm. And what would that be, Sa? How do you even know? Why would you uh, have an idea of what sort of windows Mr. and Mrs. Gavidev's house is furnished with? Sa. <laughs> ah, well, Sa, that's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigation yesterday. Oh. Uh huh. What are you doing? Oh, look at him eating his little thingies. <laughs> oh. That's <all> you... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, bitch. Do you have something to add, Mrs. B? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Damn. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry. You're starry-eyed. <laughs> you look, well, delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? Oh, I was just remembering, that's all. We really were so lucky. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, of course I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we were just lucky, just so lucky it didn't happen on Raleigh's feet. It was so close, you see. Oh, there you go. Yep. Oh, I hadn't realized. Ah, yes. That street, Raya Road, that's the bound or boundary between Raleigh's beat and the next flood. Oh, so he was standing on his beat, but yeah. the other side of the road wasn't it's his It's not beat. his. Mm. Wow. Coincidence? Isn't that right, my love? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait a second. What if they moved the body? Like, what if it happened on his beat? Yeah, that's but what they I was moved thinking. The body, so that way it that's, wouldn't be. That's more plausible, feet. though. Yeah, uh, now that you're saying that, because she didn't want him to be in trouble or be involved. Not in like, trouble, but involved. Wanted to spend time with Raleigh and not get wrapped up in an investigation or whatever. Gotcha. Possible <laughs> beat. Oh, oh, yes. That's right. Sa. That's the reason I was helping out with the interviewing. The occupants of the Gary Dev household yesterday. The house is on my beat, you see, Sa. <laughs> hmm, that really was cutting it close then. Constable, I wonder if you could clarify something. If the Gary Dev's household is on your beat, does that mean that that pavement next to it is it is or to it is as well? <laughs> Outside of Mr. Gary Dub's house? Yes, ma'am. The pavement of that side of the road is part of my beat. <laughs> I see. I was unaware of that. Just think, if that woman had been attacked just on the other side of Brown Road. We would have never been able to go for that meal to celebrate our wedding anniversary. Yeah, it, okay. Mm. 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 Kind of mm. cramming that down my throat here. But, like that's the life of a Bobby after all, <laughs> sir. 
Sir. Sir. Extraordinary people are Bobbies tirelessly working for the benefit of all Londoners. Ah. <laughs> Do you know what I think? I think it was the good Lord's way of rewarding my Rowley for all of his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? That must be it, Pat, my love. That must be it. I hate this. <laughs> I think perhaps we should make sure we have that information officially on record. So. Leave it to me, Mr. Naruhudo. I'll take care of that immediately. As the little auto save file came up. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's my turn, I think. I don't know. Oh, in the fucking... <laughs> in the order. Uh, I mean, you might okay. as well just press everything in case they give us more information. Yeah, like everything's the young woman location payment on the bright road, the early beat, the government of contrast, part from a single sandwich, the assailants have seen on the wait. I thought this I thought this was updated. Maybe the pavement of Briar Road the east side. Oh, east side. Yeah, you're right. Can we contradict evidence with evidence? Hang <laughs> <laughs> on. That's definitely the book that was on fire. Yeah. So for sure. it's like pretty damn near impossible. Nothing happened with this. This is just us making sure that we looked at it. Uh Okay. Da. Books. Nothing. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. her uh, excellent memory. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> Hold it. But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already, and it's it was dark. Oh, but Raleigh and I were strolling along, gazing at the night sky and looking for our lucky star. Wasn't it foggy? How the fuck did you see anything? Sorry. We have, like, 20, like, 100, 100 eyesight over here. Not 20, 20, 100 is the better. It's uh, not. We'll get this to our eternal happiness. It, it, it's not. The lower is better. Because it's why I have 20, 50 vision. Idiot. Idiot, Tyler. Blind as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> You're blind in one eye. Yeah. So am I. Can it guide you to an answer to the question? <laughs> The flaming book it had uh, cut across the sky in front of us. It would have lit up like a shooting star. Maybe you thought star. it was. And if I'd see a shooting star, I would have made a wish about it. Uh -huh. Let Rally be an inspector, I would have said. Three times at least. Of course, but with the smog and, smog and everything, we couldn't actually see any stars. <laughs> In short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife crossed the sky before you? Yeah, sir. That is cool. I sure at the night sky in London and star this sir. I like this guy. <laughs> I hate hmm. being your wife. Yeah, but I like his <laughs> voice. Hmm. It certainly seems like they're telling the truth. Sir. And when we saw the poor woman fall to the ground. So we ran straight over for the helper. Hmm. Hold it. Hold it. No. Yes. Oh. <laughs> you said that you went to the nearby police box to fetch another officer. Is that right? That's right. Yes. If it had been Raleigh on Raleigh's beat, I would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. You can't expect to know the location of every police box on every beat. So Raleigh told me the way. Only, I sort of got a little lost on my way. Patricia, my darling, that's why I love you. Your telephone says the direction is bewitching to me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, Pat. Oh, Raleigh! <laughs> 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 oh, it good. Almost 
Can we get a different voice actor? <laughs> Ready for Jordan. Yeah, Tyler, you put your shit now. <laughs> <laughs> I approve of this. All right, Tyler, give it, a sh give it a shot, Tyler. Uh -huh. Hmm. You know, I think I'll pass, so, but I'll do it. <laughs> Just do this one line. Do this one line, honey. So I suppose I was gone for about 15 minutes. <laughs> All right, no, I'm taking it back over. Take it back. No, 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 no. Keep it. I'm sure no. nothing was Keep it. Keep going. I don't have. I don't. I don't get to talk a lot. <laughs> I was off duty at the time, of course. But the true Bobby is never really off duty, sir. Might as well. Hold it. Hold it. Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. I had my eyes wide open the entire time. Never looked away for a second. You didn't fall asleep. No one once ever approached the scene, and has nothing. Um, and nothing was removed from it. Hmm. Hmm. I can't swear to that on the yard's honor, sir. Really? That seems a little strange. Beg your pardon, sir. Strange, sir. Seems altogether regular to me. This burnt copy of the Lion's Pride was originally in the Garadep's household. So the question remains, how did it find its way into the hands of the victim? Sir. Can you shed some light on that? Seeing as you were on the scene of the crime the entire time. Yeah. Don't fall asleep. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. Could it be different copies, sir? <laughs> One that's just happened to be burnt as well? Hmm. No. I mean... Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping a book like that in her hand? As we can see from this photographic print, she had a bag over her shoulders. Mm -hmm. Shoulder. Good point. Hmm. Well, uh, that book was in the lady's hand from the moment we arrived at the scene. Is that so? There's something about the statement that's not sitting right with me. Well, no shit. The two mysteries of how that knife ended up in her back, and how the book ended up in her hand. There must have been some common thread between them. Um, can I ask you something, please, Mr. Lester? Oh, um, yes, of course. What is it? Yeah. You're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell! What? I- I wasn't really- I mean, what she's doing? What she doing? Please, just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make an- make my testimony any less valuable. The fuck? Where'd this come from? Oh. You might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my word. I am! Let them do so. Well, now I don't I, fucking I, believe I, you at all. I, I really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> My voice will be heard. <laughs> My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? <sighs> yes, Mrs. Beats. I will allow you to supplement your testimony. If you so desire. Yes, give us something here. Some still brought a blank. Sometimes the path of least resistance is the sage one. More like you just don't want to fucking deal with her. That was a very loud mutter. <laughs> I heard that. What? That Japanese man thinks a police wife, policeman's wise word counts for nothing, does he? What? <laughs> well, watch out, sir. I might be- I might let you get away with something like that, but my rally will- I really think he's just whispering that out loud. <laughs> you really noted, Mrs. B. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. <laughs> what could she possibly be about to say, I wonder? Hmm. 
Oh, oh her fifth one changed. And she has another. Oh yeah. Well, the fifth one was actually his. Oh. Hmm. So she's changed it completely then. Oh. Oh no! It just she just added one after after hers. Oh. Hold it. Hold it. Mrs. B, nobody's questioning what you told us. I, I saw it. I did. That evening, I saw it clearly. What is the it? <laughs> that little Eastern man with the whiskers and the funny curved back slinking away from the sea. Ha. Uh. And I know what I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books or knives lined in the sky. All very clear. You, you also mentioned something, uh, something about having a poor sense of direction. Oh no! <laughs> Here it comes. Oh yes, well, that's a little embarrassing, really. I'm always ending up in the wrong place when I've made arrangements to meet Brawly. He gets ever so crossed. Oh, he looks drunk. Oh, help me. Oh. oh. He's really eating his helmet strap. That's yeah, he is. He's been eating it the entire time. That's how he stays awake. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. That's a genuine tactic. That's why when people start falling asleep, they eat, they chew gum. Constable oh, yeah. Pete, is there a problem? No problem. No, no problem. No problem, no problem sir. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> eh? Oh. Mm. Well, no, sir. No problem, sir. Did your wife remark just now? Bring something to mind, perhaps? Mayhaps. Oh, um, well, in a way, sir. Yes, sir. I, I was just remembering that the same thing happened that evening as our sir. Oh. He's the murderer mean, somehow. No, he lost a way on the night of the incident. Oh. Uh, well, you see, I sent off to find the police box in the next beat over from mine. But she was uh, she was gone a uh, far a fair bit longer than I was expecting. I thought she'd be back uh, inside ten minutes, but my darling was good at uh, gone a good fifteen. Oh, Raleigh, you're such a tease. What the fuck? What? What? <laughs> the reason I was so long was because of the bouquet, silly. Bouquet? Bouquet? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what bouquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary. Raleigh's so romantic. He saved up for it. I saved up for it with his farthings and hot pennies he found in the gutter while doing his rounds. Is it hay, maybe? Hay pennies? Hay pennies. Oh, huh? yeah, it is hay pennies. Oh, oh. hay penny. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes. How romantic. I've forgotten all about it up until about it until just now. Had you, my darling? Hmm. Hmm? Oh. Oh, yes. But that was just between us. <laughs> no talking about it to anyone else, darling. You have to promise. <laughs> really? Oh. Oh, it's because he doesn't have money. He was picking up money from the streets to buy her a bouquet of flowers. Oh, well, what was that? So he's, in, so he's embarrassed. Constable B looked very, abs uh, very opposite. Obviously troubled during that exchange, for once. I'm afraid I can't offer you any useful insight, Mr. Narahudo. <laughs> but I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Mrs. Beat about the bouquet. <laughs> Mrs. Beat, the bouquet that you mentioned, that you just mentioned. I'd like to add details about it in your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to! This is Aww. stupid. 
She knows where this is going. You're stupid, Laura Van Sykes. Let me talk. I dropped my bouquet and ended up losing my way what? for a while. Jordan. Oh my god. Wait, you lost? You dropped the bouquet? Where? I can't look at it yet. You mean you dropped the bouquet <laughs> at the end of the time? Wait, 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 wait. Is there flowers here? No. Are there flowers here? No. <laughs> you dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. I, I was so upset. When we ran over and saw it, it was the woman with a knife in her back. I was so shocked, I dropped the bouquet Raleigh gave me. It was in a dark spot where the street lights weren't casting in the light, so I didn't notice at first. So you didn't notice a massive ass bouquet gone from your hands. Well, right? she's that scatterbrained. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> and then you went to the police box to report it to the policeman who, who beat, who, whose beat it was on. Eh. We're having strokes. It's okay. Oh no no no! Stroke. Oh, 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 oh. Stroke. <laughs> Stop uh, mocking me. <laughs> yes, and I came back to the scene together with the other constable, you see? That's when I spotted my bouquet again. But the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all. He moved the body. Yeah. Only he did. Oh. In case you need reminding, Mrs. Beats, the victim is not deceased. I was all flustered for a moment before I heard a voice calling for me on the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably? That's right. Silly me. I got over to the wrong side of the street. Hmm. Hmm. Although, I'm going to blame the bouquet this time. I can't think how it got there. I really can't. Hmm. That's why he was like, don't mention yeah, this again. Don't bring it up. In so case someone moved to the one side of my road to the opposite. Hmm, curious indeed. This is bullshit. Teleporting flowers. It's isn't witchcraft. It? Ooh, isn't it? But the worst of it is, I forgot to pick up the bouquet again when we left. Pick, pick the bouquet up again when we left the scene. Ooh, oh. That beautiful rose Raleigh bought me. Oh, would that change from the gutter he spent so long collecting? Oh, Raleigh. By bouquet, <laughs> do you perhaps mean this sorry solitary rose? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this bouquet, it's one rose. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, that's it! Alright, calm down over there. <laughs> nah. That's the book hey, Raleigh bought me for our anniversary! With old bits of change you found in the gather. Oh, mm. Raleigh! Maybe just call it a rose. Tell us, Lord Van Zykes, where did you come by that flower? Up your ass, my lord. <laughs> According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Gary Dead household. In front of the Gary Dead household, and he? Although it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay there where the street lamps cast no light. It was believed to be of no relevance to the case since it was found on the opposite side of the thur thoroughfare. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Could I have that back now, please? This is evidence. Hmm. <laughs> No, I think for good measure, this road, this rose should be added to the court record as evidence. Haha. Uh, uh -huh. Oh. Haha, uh -huh, fuck you, bitch! <laughs> Time to look at it. <laughs> Time to look at it. <laughs> it might be covered, it might be, it might be smushed by a book, you don't know. <laughs> I, I think it it's be... more so the reason, or where it was, is actually but, more of relevance to us. But it was a symbol of our love! We can see the part of the blade inside of it. Oh, a newspaper! Oh. Wow, what oh, the There's a cut. Head? There's a cut on it. Is that a cut on the top of it? No. Okay, no, I'm just stupid. It's, well, it's, it's, it's just mean, the pedals. Yeah. It's just the pedals. Hmm. And yes, you are stupid, Jordan. I'm glad oh, you've come man. to terms with that. 
Yay. It's a very stylish paper the flower was wrapped in, isn't it? It's fucking it's newspaper! Yeah. It's just an old newspaper, Mr. Naruhudo. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Oh, I suppose it's because I'm not used to seeing English print. It looks so exotic to me. Ah, <laughs> uh, I, um... Uh, I, I see. You're an Stop. idiot. Uh, <laughs> is something wrong? Oh, oh! No, no. I was just thinking that if you wrap the stoned baked sweet potato in English newspaper... You'd be Luigi. It might look like some sort of fancy cake. Ah, susato san you do love your cakes. What? When, when was that ever brought up in the past that she's liked cake? Now. <laughs> An English rose. It's such a beautiful flower. Ah, this is a rose, is it? i never seen one before. Do you not take interest in flowers, Mr. Naruhudo? I wouldn't say that exactly, but I do know three types at least. <laughs> Gosh. Three? <laughs> yes. Plum blossoms, peach blossoms, and cherry blossoms. <laughs> Perhaps you should consider branching out. Huh? Learning some that aren't fruit tree based, for example. <laughs> nice nice pun there, Mrs. <laughs> Tee hee. Alright, so there is no cut, basically. I don't see it. No, it's just. just it's just a rose. Yeah, it's the location of it is more important of where it was. Yes. But it's a symbol of our love. Yeah. I want it back after the trial. Do you hear me? I want it back. I'm gonna burn it right in front of you. <laughs> no. Good grief. Rest. Rest assured that I shall do my very best not to forget, Mrs. Beat. I've already <laughs> got who you are. Fine. <laughs> Uh, so the flower, right? Do we present the flower? I mean, maybe? Yeah, because if we didn't, then how did the flower get on the other side? Y yes. What, yeah. what our dumb friend just said. Yeah, yep. S Objection! Okay. Cool. Objection! You claim, Constable Beat, there was nothing to report. In the 15 or so minutes, <laughs> you've been seen. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Shut up. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in the background. Somebody sprinkled pepper on my nose. <laughs> that, that cannot be. What do you mean to say? I got distracted by something that's not existing in this world quite yet. It's called a cell phone. <laughs> in your testimony just now, <laughs> Mrs. B, you explained to the court. Cell phones exist at this point, don't they? No! Telephone boxes do, but. Oh, wait. Right. Yeah, no, they're still, they're still by horse drawn carriages. That's right. Your horse drawn carriage. Damn. <laughs> then, when you arrived at the scene at the car, the policeman assigned to the beat. The bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Objection! Oh. Objection! Yeah. Yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. But considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single sorry blossom can be so described, I point at you. No doubt it was blown in the wind across the street back into the gutter where it belongs. Damn! This word I can't say. Meager. I don't know. Meager? I don't know why. Brain was just like merge. But if that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to the fact? <laughs> no one else approached the scene, and nothing was removed from it. Constable Beat swore to that on Scotland Yard's honor. Get fucked. But the bouquet belonged to me. It has nothing to do with the case. Alright, let's be honest here. You two are not amazing people that are filled to the brim with money. Your bow on top of your head is made out of stitches. Just, Look, just get it. We get it. Just, we get, <laughs> no, we get it. 
It's one flower. <laughs> it's a singular flower. It's not a bouquet. That's that's why Riley didn't mention it. I'm sure. Hon, I'm gonna get you a bouquet tomorrow. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, make sure you you're tweet. gonna get me a single rose. I love roses. <laughs> make, make sure you tweet it on face on Twitter and everything. <laughs> like everyone, I bought a bouquet for my my. <laughs> Make sure you get a bouquet for uh, Gizmo too, or else he's gonna scream at this one. Oh yeah, you're right. And then make sure you hashtag uh, Ace hashtag Attorney. Ace Attorney. <laughs> no, because sadly, it's not only your bu okay we're talking about here. Oh my god, you even got Okay. <laughs> more than one thing in this case is mystery. Uh, more than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way around. Wrong way around. around. What are you talking about? Well, let's think about it. You need the knees. Besides Mrs. Beat's bouquet, there's Mr. Gary Deb's book. Mr. Gary Deb's copy of the Lion's Pride, which was thrown out the window by his wife, would have stru st uh, struck the pane of the case uh, casement window and landed here on the west side of the street. <laughs> I would imagine the the window would be cracked and shit from these books hitting it, but I mean, I guess that's just me. And yet, <laughs> <laughs> it was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in the victim's hand. I like to think he just put a magnet up to it and it was just like me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Mrs. Beat Bouquet. <laughs> Should have been dropped here at the si at the scene of the crime on the east side of the street. <laughs> and in fact, <Yeah. laughs> it was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in front of Mr. and Mrs. Gary Depp's house. There's no logical so explanation for those for these things. Oh, I see the X slide is so funny to me. Unless somebody deliberately moved them. Look at you. Fucking. What are you trying to say? Unless, like, someone else did move it and he just fell asleep. Nah, he moved it. <laughs> the way you're talking, it sounds like you think my Raleigh's done something wrong. <laughs> Don't you listen to a word that scrawny lawyer says. I you existed. <laughs> <laughs> Wittering on about books and bouquets? Why should we care? It's nitpicking. That's what it is. Oh, good. Mrs. Gary Depp's come, come round. Oh, right. Yeah, she passed out. I forgot about that. You might call it nitpicking, Mrs. Gary Depp. But deliberately meddling with the scene of the crime is a criminal offense. It's called, um... Perjury? Tampering. Tyler. Mr. Narahudo and Tyler? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah, it is Naruto. tampering. tampering I wanted to say this to Tyler. <laughs> 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 but the person responsible for this tampering cannot admit to it. For a very sub uh, subtle and compelling reason. Objection! Objection. <laughs> tampering? I, I You've I barely do. heard the term before. Tell us, my learned friend, I point at you, who would possibly have had cause to carry out such an elaborate deception. Yes, there was someone who tampered with the scene of the crime that, that evening. All of the evidence of, of and, and all the testimony points to that one particular person. Uh, counsel, oh. I must demand that you substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? Uh, it's... Herlock, Herlock Sholmes. Herlock It was him! Uh, no, it's gotta be... It's gotta be Raleigh. Take that! Take that! Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Who? Uh, Cosmo Raleigh beat. It was you! What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? Heh. What yeah. nonsense! Why would my Raleigh do something like that? <laughs> There's no one straight, straighter than my husband. No Bobby works more tirelessly for the people of London. What if Raleigh's actually homosexual? 
<laughs> That's nothing to do with that. He was trying to basically have a good night with his wife. No, what if he did that so he get out of it because he didn't want to be married because he's homosexual. Get, get oh out God, of here, Reed. <laughs> Mrs. Breed. <laughs> no. You said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone could have tampered with it. You're making it up. It's all nonsense. It's all lies. What about the Japanese man with whiskers? I thought it was him. He did it. Objection. Objection. Come on, that's stupid. <laughs> if that was true, Constable B would have seen him do it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and forgive me for pointing it out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Mrs. B, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Yeah, you literally said so yourself. I mean, well, well, well. Uh, Objection! <laughs> Objection! First, you make accusations about the landlord and his wife. And now you incriminated a policeman as well. But your accusations lack one very important thing. Huh? Evidence. You claim the crime scene was tampered with, but there is only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime. To hide something. That's right. He's right. But my husband and I just happened to be there, that's all. So why would we have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense. You've offered no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you? you do, I point at you. Your accusations are nothing but empty threats. Oh, we have a motive. Oh, we, we've got it easy. Constable Beat had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the scene of the crime. We got this the moment we fucking saw the book. That's the key to this entire affair. Affair? Affair? You cheating on you cheating on your wife with uh with Mrs. <laughs> with Mrs. Gaddian or whatever? Yeah. Mr. Narahudo, have you have you managed to solve this mystery? Oh my god. We're not even fucking close to the end of this trial. <laughs> yeah, we start to figure out like Who, who did it? Them. We're just finding out why he moved it. Yeah. Who Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London police officer. If you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not point out that your reputation as a lawyer will be irrevocably damaged. With that stark warning in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Yes, my lord. Basically, that's a funny way of saying you got one chance. It was Herlock Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Constable Lee's motive for tampering with the crime scene has was to hide where the victim fell. Huh. Where the victim fell to the ground. That is what the body had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? You you mean where she was attacked? No, anymore, what are you talking about? We Probably told you at the very start, didn't we? Uh, on the pavement of Briar Road, we saw it happen, remember? We did. It was right here, as if anyone didn't already know. That's only what everyone has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. Oh, what? What? Hmm. I'm begging, beginning to wonder where this tumultuous trial will end, Counsel. Enough. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know my nipple knees friend. Nipples. You even say nipple. I did. I said nipple knees. Nipples. Where are you proposing that the crime actually took place that evening? Over in here. In the house. It's in here. It's actually off the map. It's up here. <laughs> it's right there. Take that. Right over there. Take that. But but that's 
on the opposite side of the road. Uh, I don't understand. Because you're a dumb person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, eating a no. question. I'm just a woman who's married to a policeman. Just hear me out. <laughs> Mr. Kevin has both fell directly from the open window above. And your bouquet, Mrs. B, never moved at all. What did Whoa. move was the scene of the crime itself! Good, good gracious! Objection! Objection! This is paltry. Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony this court has heard. I point at you. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. That, that's right. I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes. It was 5 o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was a typical London fog on the ground. When you saw the incident on foot and ran to the victim's aid, <laughs> there was actually on the west side of Bio Road. No, that's not true. It, it can't have been. Oh, look at him. He's also, like, motionless now. Yeah, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna snap. Yeah. Constable B, then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you for help. Well, and during the 15 minutes you were away, he trans, uh, transplanted the crime scene. Transplanted the scene. That's a weird way of saying that. Right. He moved all the things shown in the print, the victim, herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement on the east side of Wire Road. Oh, interesting. Okay. So he put the book in her hand? Probably. Maybe. Then what was the other person rummaging over her body for? Because that was what we thought was the initial point of why that guy put the book in her hand. But she, he didn't. Constable Beat did. Hmm. Uh -huh. Extraordinary! But the constable overlooked one thing. What? What did he overlook? The bouquet, I presume? He's angry looking. Exactly. Maybe, maybe he didn't put the book in her The prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the, or the rose bouquet. Lord Van Zykes said, it wasn't until it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. Yes, it couldn't be seen in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was only uh, it was only the bouquet, and uh, uh, that was found in the original position of the pavement on the west side of Byron Road. <laughs> and that is the defense's theory of what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Raleigh Breet! Oh, he's gonna freak out. Freak out. Do it. Start crying. Or he's gonna, like, wake up. He's gonna wake up and take the scarf. Oh. Oh. Um. Well. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to nod off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. He's been sleeping through that the whole time. Yep. Did I miss anything important? <laughs> <laughs> Raleigh? It isn't true, is it? What the law said is all lies, isn't it? I know it is because you're the most upstanding, rough man I know, sir. Oh, we just ruined a marriage. Oh, no. I had a dream. A terrible dream. All oh, the things I did that night. Everything come out. Everything exposed. Uh, oh. Uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> Only, it seems... It wasn't a dream. It wasn't a dream at all. Stop playing the game ahead of us, Tyler. <laughs> I fucking know what he's gonna say. I played Phoenix right all the goddamn time. <laughs> I mean, for fuck's sake, I, I knew that the one lady was gonna say, uh, I'm not a granny, Sunny or something. Along yeah, exactly. Way. Order, order! What on order. earth is the meaning of all this? 
Oh, Rally, why? Why would you do something like that? You still look so happy. <laughs> Moving corpses is, 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 is a criminal offense, isn't it? I mean, it's not a corpse. Yeah, but leaving mm. her like that, I guess, is. Well, I mean, I don't know. Wishing the victim dead should be one, too. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. Hmm. I, I can't say, sir. Oh? Does he owe money to someone? Oh, maybe he does. Man. Maybe that's how he bought the bouquet. What? I really am really so ever so sorry about all this. For damaging the yard's reputation. For ev for everything. I have a possible explanation. <laughs> for why, on that particular evening, Constable Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. And yet, Lord Van Zykes, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Oh, we're getting complimented by the judge? Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. Now then, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. Unzips his pants. <laughs> <laughs> England, Japan, it makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are the same. And I think I have a fairly good idea of the feeling behind the man's action. What gives away the motive for Constable Beat's unthinkable actions? This car. But... Take that! Take that! I realize that I'm a foreigner in this land, and I've only just arrived from Japan. Which is why all this information about London's so called Bobbies is completely new to me. Bobbies. I've learned that. Through honorable patrolling, the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keeping the peace, looking after the citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways. There's no doubt that young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But, for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special? How? An account of his bouquet, my lord. Yes. It was our very first wedding anniversary. <gasps> what is this? Uh, Don't tell me. <laughs> Constable B was uh, had worked so hard to able to afford the simple gift for his wife. Did my heart just skip a beat? <laughs> I had a, a beat. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even the fucking intention. <laughs> Too bad it was, and you did it. <laughs> And we're nice. so looking forward to taking her out for a, celebra a celebratory meal. <laughs> when he and Mrs. Beat stumbled upon a crime along Briar Road. Oh! oh this is sinister. Oh, Jesus. When he yeah. saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them. What must have gone through the man's mind? Atta! Just wanted that pretty, one pretty little day. I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Stop. Mrs. Beat puts up with a lot of being married to a Bobby like me, but to show my dear wife how much I care. Mm. Mm. This is the warrant card that Constable Beat offered to le uh, lend to me earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling policemen, it says, When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigation and help detectives. 
Aha! Constable beat. Is that or is it not the reason why you moved the whole uh, scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's all right. So that's it. Human emotion. <laughs> it was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. <laughs> Good gracious! Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you have done? Yeah, a lot has actually changed because of that. It was the first time I, I became a copper. That I ever curse God. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal could be looking somewhere. As I ran over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty of a, as a police officer. We got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then, it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying, and what that meant for me. When a crime is discovered on this on this beat, policemen must assist with initial investigation and help detectives. Why here? Why did it have to happen here? And why tonight? Of all nights? Why? It's a copper's job to guard the scene of the crime, so. I told Pat she had to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then, when I opened my mouth to speak, it just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. Uh, this is the next beat to mine, Pat. So you have to go to the police box that covers it. Turn right along Mishima Street and then... Just given the directions mm -hmm. to the other beat. Yep. Oh, this is sad. So like, does that just throw the entire case out the window just because all of it's been tampered evidence then? Not oh, on one side. Not necessarily in real court. Absolutely, it would be. But this is this is Ace Attorney. Court. I, I I guess sure. Hmm. Oh no! Oh. oh, he's crying. I'm. I'm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh. I'm gonna cry. Oh, constable. I I just wanted just that one night to make my Patricia out take my Patricia out for dinner. Oh, Raleigh. Just that one night. You knew that if the incident was on your beat, your evening of celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move the entire crime scene outside your jurisdiction. Just across the street, to the east pavement of Briar Road, which falls under the neighboring Beats camp. You see, I... I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I beg your pardon! Of course he did. Otherwise, my Raleigh would never have left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. I mean, that's honestly yeah, I, I kind of that. fair. I believe that's that fair. entirely. Ah, yes. I see your meaning now. He wouldn't, he would have been more of a gentleman is what he was saying. Yeah. God got me back from my sins, didn't he? That's why. That's why I missed the rose I bought for Pat. Oh, oh no, Raleigh. That, that was my fault. 
I should have never dropped it in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Raleigh. Hmm. And can you tell us, Constable? How many books did you move from the one side of the road to the other in total? Hmm? Oh, um... Four it was. Yes, sir. Uh, definitely. Four. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsu Natsume, and the fourth... ...being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garadev household, of course. What? That made you uh, that made you place that book in the victim's hand. What made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the others were scattered uh hazardly around, I mean. Oh, saw that's yeah. because that's how I found it. Yeah, so they still put the book in her hand, it's just that Beat saw it and thought that, that she was holding it. How yes. you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene the victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. You're sure it was this book, the lion's pride, that was the victim was holding? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, no doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. Oh, 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 oh. changed. I thought it was an open and shut case at the time, you see. There were only the two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happen. However, which way you look at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off who had done it, I thought. I could have seen the harm, really. I didn't think moving it all over the road would make a jo uh, jot of difference. I... I suppose this... This is it for me now. I've had it. My lord. Yes, Lord Van Zykes. I'm gonna kill him. I believe that concludes the cross-examination of the witnesses. Uh. Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, sir! Mr. Prosecutor, sir. What will become of my Raleigh? What will happen to him? He will be murdered. For now, you are free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Please don't punish my husband. This this was my fault. It's because I'm always mo moaning at him for coming home late. Mm. Get out. I knew you would do it, too. <laughs> Even now, Pat. Let's go home. Tired. Let's go get some good sleep. Alright then, my love. One last thing, Constable. Ah? Uh? Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir. Part of that lesson to your mind. And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of a crime. Oh, is he not going to be super punished? Ah, uh, never, never again, sir. You, you mean to say? Uh, leave now. This trial is not yet over. Uh, um... Sir! Oh, I'm happy for him. Van Zykes has a soft spot. Yeah, he now sure back does. to the murder. Yeah, no, <laughs> back to murdering this. It's not murder. It's it's oh. attempted murder. Huh. Yes. <laughs> well, quite a startling revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party transplanting the entire scene of a crime like that? What a weird way to say that. Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here. Principally, I point that the accused, Mr. Sosexy Natsumi is the only person who could have possibly committed this crime. Objection! No, I disagree. Cool. Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there is someone else. Yeah, 
I thought this. Uh... Another person who could be responsible for the knife in the victim's back. Something that I was thinking about was, uh, what if she? So there's there's a couple things. She could have been knocked out by the book when it fell out of the window, and then the blade probably came down to stab her. Because now, the blade would only hit her in the back if she was on the ground. Mm -hmm. The alternative is that the book fell out in front of her, and she looked down to grab it. Yeah, that's, that's what true. I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, it was in her hand already, yeah, so... Yeah, exactly. And then someone took the chance and stabbed the knife into her. Well, no, then the, then the knife fell out the window and hit her. Yeah, that too. And the other person is that only was there and effectively attempted to steal something from her, not actually hurt her. Yes. Ta. <laughs> oh, uh... But I didn't get to read that line. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, but I believe the prosecution is probably well aware that this poss that this is possibility already. I mean, it doesn't matter, just yeah, go. Yeah, no, I was just reading it. Lord Van Sykes, is this true? Very well. Name the person, if you will, and if further the investigation is warranted. Shakespeare, dude. The prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. Oh my god, wait a second. Are we gonna... Are we gonna have a replaced juror? Yeah, oh, maybe. Because if that's the case, they might cause a second day of the trial. Possibly. Name the person. It was him! Perpetrated the crime. The other person who could have been perpetrated to the crime. Yeah. Well, she couldn't have been there because she was throwing the... Well, system. no, oh, it's, the, okay. it's the knife throw. The defense would once again like to request the cross examination of a new witness, my lord. Once again. My assistant made the same request earlier. In other words, and in order to finally reveal the truth of this about this case. Whoa. It's imperative that we cross examine juror number four, Miss Joanne Gary Deb. Mrs. Is it me? Me? How oh, dare me? Objection! Objection! Enough. That request has already been denied. Objection! But that situation is very di the situation is very different now. Yeah, it, it really is. It's not even remotely the same situation. <laughs> yeah. At this point, yeah. Mrs. Gary, to answer me this. No. What do you want now, you little toad? Wow. Huh? Rude. Ah. But, but not unwarranted. Toad, toad voice. Wow! Oh, there we go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Gary Deb. In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited. And to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looked out over Briar Road. Well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered uh, with his back against the window. Was Upon striking the pane of the open top hinged casement window, the book plummeted directly down. Finding its way, to what we know now, uh, to now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and as I said, what of it? During the argument, you very, uh, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just the books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Gary Dub. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back. Have you really never laid eyes on it before? Uh -huh. I don't recall it. Seriously? 
I supposed to remember everything I picked up from throughout my husband? And anyway, the man over there... Uh, over there and all that rege regalia said members of the jury need testify, didn't he? Conveniently, yes. Objection! Objection! No! I have no recollection of saying that at all, juror number four. Got him. Oh? Make no mistake, you jurors are not special in any way. You are not immune to the judicial process. I point at you, juror number four. If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. But, but this is the commoner, commoner gardener's knife. It couldn't have come, I've come from anywhere. We have several like that at home. If if one went missing, Aww. how would you expect me to know? What's that? You just said she had one. Are you jo? Are you joking? Huh. What are you saying, please, Miss Garadab? They have several of those knives. Now you listen to me. I refuse. Uh, I refuse to believe all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought that, that I'd injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it. But that's why you could beat your husband. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the poor woman. Don't She's delusional. <laughs> so, yes, I want evidence. I want to see hard evidence if you're going to insist that uh, this be my fault. You're gonna have to prove to me that I threw that knife if that's what you think. Come now, chop chop, do your worst. Uh, well. Um, well. I don't have shit. Well, Mr. Narahudo. That, believe me, I would have thrown it at her already. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> then take the stand, juror. The prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross-examine this woman. She's lying sack of filth. Thank you, Lord Von Zeeks. I... I'm going to have to testify? You're damn right. Juror number four, as I'm sure you will appreciate having observed it with your own eyes today, witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths being unearthed. Truths of which the witnesses themselves may not even have been aware. Oh, dearie me. Yeah, we're gonna prove you're innocent. So I demand your full and unadulterated testimony, Mrs. Garrett. Get it all. And mark my words, in this court of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, counsels? Certainly. Oh, um, that's what I'm hoping for, my lord. Ooh, this is- oh. <laughs> you can see her pog face on- Oh! Pog? Poggers? Oh, angle. Oh my this god. such a strange feeling. For the first time ever since arriving to this country, in this country, it actually feels real. Why? Oh, angle. Ooh. I'm here, in the old bailey. And I am a lawyer. Ooh, this is feeling dope. And I am dope. shouting this to the world. Yeah, good job. Yeah, he's shouting it again. <laughs> Witness, state your name and occupation. Bitch. Oh, uh, yes, my name is Joanne Garatub. And I'm, um, well, I'm mature and such like. Hmm. It sounds like uh, 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 it sounds like even she doesn't know if she's a housewife or a maid or what anymore. The court has decided your testimony is required in order to clarify matters in this case. Do you understand, madam? I yes, I I my lord. Yes, my lord. Face jiggles. You will tell the court everything that took place in your household on the evening in question. I point. And I warn you, do not attempt to hide the truth. Oh. Oh, oh, oh dearie me. 
<laughs> oh, it's the uh, it's the husband. It's, it's her husband. Yeah. Yeah. Get up, Joni. Nothing to worry about now. Oh, oh what the fuck? Oh, I didn't know you were here, John. Moonface. Moonface looking ass. Oh, his face is healed up too. Wasn't only you in that room that day, old thing, was it? Rather think I ought to testify as well, don't you? Oh, she's so sweet. What? Well, what about your knee, dear? Don't you worry about that. Hardly notice it. I'm not the sort of chap to leave a comrade to face disciplinary action alone. Oh, John. Oh, not this shit again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except now it's with me and her, so it makes more sense. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I presume you are Mr. John Gary Depp. Yes, sir. Former second lieutenant of the third regiment of the fourth Northumberland Fus Northumberland Fusilier, sir. I was just about to say, yeah, North Thunderland. Thunder thighs. Seen my fair share of action, and now living the quiet life as it were. The quiet life. Were you not engaged in an incendiary battle with your spouse on the day in question? True. Ah, well, yes. <clears throat> Quiet. <laughs> but I believe this may represent a first in the proud history of the British court. Calling a juror to the witness stand is unprecedented. However, the court will hear your testimony now, juror number four, and that of your husband. You will recount clearly and concisely the events in your home at the time of the incident in question. Sir, at once. Fun. Oh, so she's holding the pipe now? Yep. Aw. <laughs> and now it's back to a pipe. The Battle of Garrett. The Battle of Garrett, <laughs> Deb. That's awesome. Alright, don't rush this too fast because I'm going to grab something quick, so take your time. Uh, I also want to grab some more water, so... Okay, we'll, we'll, take, a, we'll take a hot break. Just, I want to grab a snack. Break. Oh, let me just, ah, for just some peace and quiet while we wait. Ooh. Fuck, I dropped my water bottle cap. Where'd that go? There it is. <clears throat> What happened? Eh, no, we just uh, we just wait. Decided to take a break for a quick second because everyone was oh. like, getting up. Yeah, I got my water. All right. I got my snackies. Your snackies. Uh, nope. There we go. Okay. Yes, on the day you're referring to, the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. Can't recall the reason now. Knocked oh, the yeah. candlestick over and set fire to the carpet. Soon had it out though and got the window open. Mm. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find, whatever I could find to throw at him. Plenty of knives around our place. Can't say I noticed that one or two went missing. I'm afraid. If that bounty thing in your victim's bag really was one of ours, you'll have a job proving it. I think. Hmm. Dang. Hmm. It sounds as though it was quite the battlefield in your household that evening. Although, an entirely one-sided assault, it seems. The enemy caught us on the hop, sir. Had no choice but to dig in and take defensive measures. To be honest, if the enemy had kept shelling us for another minute, we'd have been toast. Uh, toast, get it? Of course. A veteran such as myself is only too aware that on every battlefield, you're just a gnat's whiskers from death at any moment. Oh, he's wearing his medal we... now, by the way. Wasn't he not wearing oh, it earlier? No. Dude. Are we still talking about a Marshall Crow here? Marinal, well, sorry, Tyler. I must say, I'm dubious that this testimony will shed any light on the origins of this jackknife. In combat, one's focus narrows such that surroundings are barely noticed. These witnesses may not be able to offer anything more than they have wit 
testified already. This may be a dead end. Van Zeeks may, uh, may well be right. Well, whatever the chances... We only have this last cross-examination to uncover the truth, Mr. Naruhudo. Yes, I'm afraid so. Very well, Council. Begin your cross-examination. Yes, ah! Uh... <laughs> so the day referring to the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish, can't recall the reason I'm gonna, gonna put, press Hold that it. one real quick. The reason? Is what you told us just as you believe. <laughs> yes, that's, that's right. If I remember correctly. Hold it. It all started because of a note that was tucked into the pages of a book belonging to Mr. Garadeb. <laughs> wow, what mean? Rather passionate note, in fact. <laughs> But Mrs. Garrett had found the note, discovering her husband's little secret. <laughs> and she gave him a mighty number of slaps across the face for it, too. Oh, yeah. We can see she looks so excited ones. to say that. What a sordid state of affairs. Hell on earth. <laughs> <laughs> I say. When a chap says he can't recall such things, it's common decency not to drag it all up. <laughs> and besides, half of it was wide of the mark anyway. Oh, God. A likely story. <laughs> well, she can't pour the cup on him anymore. Yep, it's not sitting. <laughs> Those waters went very deep. <laughs> I want Trent spied, except after these multiple blows to the face. That was worth it. <laughs> uh, uh. Hold it. And the fire was uh, also spread to some items of the furniture, didn't it? I feel like this is a case where we're going to have to press everything anyways. The bookcase, my armchair, anything of mine, really. Just so happens there was some bath water around that, even, that evening, so I sloshed that about to put it out. Oh, you were selling some uh, Garrett uh, bath water, I see. Gotcha. I buy it. No. <laughs> A most precarious situation you put yourself in. Ours is a three-story house. A townhouse on the west side of the street where the water main isn't connected yet. Had to draw water from a public water pump during the day if you need any, you see. Oh, that sucks. The lodgers are always moaning that they can't get any water at night. Although, that little moustache Japanese man buys water in bottles, I believe. The defendant, Mr. Natsumi, you mean? Yes, he receives the stipend for his studies, you know, from his home country. Can you imagine being able to brew up a pot of tea at all hours? He obviously is very well off. Have you actually seen the state of the, of the man? <laughs> I believe he uses all of his incomes, uh, income to buy books. Yeah. Well, anyway, the point is I was able to douse the fire with water, fortunately enough. Hold it! Hold it. I was debating on whether or not to compress this. Even though the room was on fire? As far as I was concerned at the time... It was more important to extinguish my anger than the flames. When a woman wants to throw, she must throw. Hey, hon, whenever familiar. you get absurdly angry with no. me, please don't throw anything. Just hit me. I'll heal. Good. Whatever you throw won't. Good, oh, good lord. Smart, I, I don't... I don't. <laughs> I don't ever want to throw anything at you. Goodness. <laughs> okay, you say well, that I'm now happy. until you're married. Not yet. <laughs> you got Look, you got a point. <laughs> that is most certainly not true of Sasato Take Town, Mr. Narahudo. I I disagree. <laughs> How did you know I was thinking that? <laughs> 
to complete, you can cast your mind back and try to remember. Was a knife among the items that you threw at your husband that day? Hmm. In all honesty, I don't recall. You a bitch. But I feel I must point out that I am no monster. Let me see. Some bread, a cabbage, garlic, a oh, towel, a sponge, a napkin. What? What did he say? He said something. Well, know. he's reacting. Well, yeah, I can't remember what he said, though. Couldn't hear Excuse me. Excuse, Excuse me. me. Do you have something to add? Sa? My pipe, too. <laughs> and his book. Mr. Gary Deb. Um, holy shit, dude. <laughs> Don't shoot. Ah, sorry. I beg your pardon. Did your wife remark just now bring something to mind? None of any significance, no. Just that the barrage of projectiles, the whole thing launched in my direction, was somewhat more solid than she implies. Books, bricks, and a fire poker, I seem to recall. Oh, mm hmm. Whoa. Mm. It's a lot of dangerous stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. And the woman's aim is uncanny. She landed directly with everybody! Ah! Good grief, woman! We're not at home now! This is a court of law! His pipe, too? Yeah, it wasn't his pipe! Now he's going to... <laughs> oh, dearie me! Ever so sorry, dear! Did he say Bali or balls? Every Bali, okay. What is, is he... she even doing with the teapot in here? Honestly, John, I would have never sewn such things at you, obviously. Hmm. Well, take, take a, look. a look at this then. Hey, oh. Excuse me. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Well, take a look at this then. How do you suppose that happened? Hmm? Your pipe, sir. Had this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out with one of her soft projectiles she did, yes. And when I went to pick the thing up, it was broken in two. I'd like to see a sponge do that sort of damage. I see. The pipe was broken. I mean, it could have hit the floor and blown. Yeah, yeah. It would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by pretty something pretty solid. I don't know, getting hit by a cabbage is going to knock something out of your hand. Especially if you're holding with only three fingers. Like, you're not really gripping it with for dear life here. Anyway, I've managed to bandage the thing up for now. Ah, you are one to exaggerate, aren't you, dear? Uh -huh. I wonder what we should make of this account. Uh, it's fairly important. The defense believe Mr. Gary has remarks just now is to be a uh, great significance. Objection! Objection! This war veteran's words are only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife and pipes, as well as hearts, may be broken. Sentimental wisdom, perhaps, but hardly worthy of adding to the form of testimony. Indeed, common sense, one might say. Oh. Might one? In that case, would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? Oh, yeah, that'd be useful. Mm. Well, I don't see why not. There's a whole bunch of tea in it. Oh, dear me. There you go again. Try to integrate yourself with the young lady. What the fuck? <laughs> Try to integrate Toxic. yourself with the woman. <laughs> Very well, the court will accept the gentleman's pipe as evidence. Alright, let's fucking look at it. Apparently it fell on the floor during a domestic dispute. Alright. Alright, if there's a knife blade in it, then we know. Oh, right, a cut! Oh yeah, there's a, there's a pretty deep cut right there. How about inside? There it is! There's the tip! Oh, no! <gasps> How did you not notice that? Because <laughs> he's not oh, actually using just... it. So there's Prinko inside the chamber. Of it's the also actually it's caught in like the little pipe exit, like you can see right there. 
It's oh, the, the yeah. The tip of it's lodged in there. So if it if it's lodged in there good enough, it's not gonna move. Oh, I'll launch you in there. Video. I will kill you. <laughs> With what? A broken tip? Oh my god. Yes, I saw it. I saw it. Something's stuck in there, I think. Let's turn it over and give it a shake. <laughs> what is this? It's a tiny fragment of metal! That'd be really funny if in, like, the the investigated portion, you just turn it upside down and you watch the little metal piece fall out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade? The, the oh, tip of oops. a blade? Surely it couldn't be. Jordan, how dare you? You read her words. Oh, did I? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Fuck! Jordan! <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> Damn you! Uh, we got what we were looking for. We're done. <laughs> now examine now this. Now we gotta examine this. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's a very tip. It's a nice tip. <laughs> it's, it's a tiny piece of metal we found in the chamber of Mr. Gary Depp's pipe. Alright, that's tip. that's really bad, though. It, it looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade? Yes, the tip of a blade! Did you not just hear me, you idiot? Is something wrong, Mr. Narahudo? I... I don't really know. What could it mean? It's just something niggling me. Niggling? <laughs> niggling? I can't quite put my finger on what it is. Niggling, niggling. me? <laughs> hmm. What? In that case, it's niggling me too. Uh, don't say it. Uh, let's 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 get away <laughs> yeah, from let's this drop word. It. Yeah, let's drop that. Why is it niggling you? Yeah, uh, Jordan, you're, you're treading really close here, man. <laughs> it would be wise to examine some other pieces of evidence again. Oh, we gotta look at the broken fucking rose. <laughs> the <Yes>. broken rose. <laughs> Oh, oh, what's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? It's the tip. Oh, look here, Mr. Naruhudo. It's wait. just the tip. Oh, wait, part of it is missing. Oh, I could be wrong, but I've just got a feeling. No. You remember this? Ah, that's that's a tiny fragment of metal we found inside of Mr. Garadip's pipe. Yes, and just maybe. What are you gonna fucking stick it to it? <laughs> Oh my! Uh oh. Oh my! It's a perfect fit. Shut up, Mr. Nakahudo. I would like tip to say that the assistant fit. is being talked over too much. <laughs> it's a tip I'm of tired. perfect fit. <laughs> Did it, it change is. anything? No. <laughs> Come on. I hope so, boy. Sorry. I don't get lines. <laughs> It, look, I, I can read them to you. It's okay. Look at, look at here. Read the, read the manuscript. It's okay. I can't read it. It's not on the screen. What? Damn it, Tyler. Wait, the history it, doesn't show up for you guys? No, it does. I'm being a dick about it. Oh. I hope I didn't speak out of turn, Mr. Naruhudo. Oh. You did, you bitch. I, I was just feeling rather disappointed for you that your request was turned down. Oh no, it's fine. Thanks to Sarasan, we might have new evidence to work with. We should examine it carefully. <laughs> no, we should re-examine it! Well, what thank you for that rebuttal, me? Mr. Garadab. Now if we could return to the crux of the matter. No, it, it would it can still trigger. Okay. Yeah, because we, we did it with the uh with the cart before earlier. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. What can you tell the court about the knife used to attack the victim? Yeah, have a hard time proving it was us. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Present something to it real quick, real quick, like. Objection! Fuck! Are you serious? Did you, Come did you on! Do the tip? You did. Probably the knife then. Uh, I feel like it's not that hard. Of a, uh, whatever. All right, let me press him, and maybe he'll be like, "How do you? How are you gonna do it?" Sorry, would you care to elaborate? Nothing to say, really. Rather partial to a spot of carving, you see. Pipes and whatnot. Fishing tackle. You know, sort of thing. 
It's a passion we both share. I like to carve little wooden trinkets too. And then there's my leather work. Sorry to say, we're always losing knives about the place. We have dozens of things. They sell them at the market sometimes. Twenty for a piece of nineteen. Needless to say, they snap them up. John prefers to use two knives at the metal... At, at meals... At, at meal times, too, instead of a knife and fork. What? 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 <laughs> You're a like fucking use... freak. <laughs> Does he like to try to use them like chopsticks? Jordan, it's like when we had to use fucking two butter knives instead of chopsticks at the house. Ah. <laughs> she forgot oh, that that happened. Fucking do it again. <laughs> that was, what did we use it for? We used it for rice, right? Rice, eggs, and sausage. We're so stupid. No, no, Joanne. We don't want people thinking I'm some kind of savage. Here we go again with the scandalings. Why are you they being so evasive? Scaldings. Shut up. I imagine it's because they don't want to believe it. They can't bear the thought that it might have been one of their knives that injured the victim. Which is entirely understandable, understandable of course, but still. Go on with your testimony, witnesses. Sir! Ah. His uh, metal flashed there too. Ah. Baby. Oh, I need I need to prove it on this one. I need to present it on this one, not the other one. Yes. Objection. Yeah. I Objection. It, I presented it on the wrong one. I was too gung ho <laughs> about it. Mr. Gary Deb, could I ask you to take a look at this, please? It's my uh, tip. It looks like the broken end of an axe. You can ask, but I can't see about a thing. What? You can't? You used to call me Dead Eye Dave back in the regiment, of course, but that was some time ago now. Even when I'm trying to enjoy a large print book by the fire these days, I struggle to tell a B from a D and a P from a Q, to be honest. What the? What? He's dyslexic. Well, no, I think, it, I think he's bl going blind. He does. Deary me, it's rather wearing being asked about it every other letter and every other word. Lions dried. That doesn't suck, right? <laughs> you mean, you must D very dusty. No. <laughs> That's, wait a second. You're saying those words, though. <laughs> he's yeah, not, he's not reading them. So the the lions cried then, right? <laughs> what is that? A tiny scrap of metal. It's my tip. <laughs> yes, almost <laughs> only from the tip of a, of my blade. And what may appear to, uh, at first to be just a tiny scrap is in fact a crucial ev piece of evidence. Interesting. And where did the defense come by this evidence? It was lodged in the chamber of Mr. Gary Depp's pipe. My pipe, you say? By Jove, <laughs> I wonder how that got in there. <laughs> the tip got it lodged in his pipe. I hate you. <laughs> and what precisely does this fragment of metal signify, Council? Are you suggesting that it's in some way related to the matter of the stabbing on Briar Road? Why? I just broke <laughs> Why did you do that? I am. I'm very concerned for your face. It's already ugly enough. It looked like Mr. Gary Depp's at night. <laughs> <laughs> when put together with another piece of evidence already in the court record, I believe this tiny fragment of metal will unravel the whole case of uh, truth of this case, my lord. Oh, wow, her uh, chair uh, is at red right now instead of uh, white or black. Hmm, you appear rather confident in that extraordinary statement, Counsel. Very well, then. Present the pertinent evidence to the court. What evidence, when paired with this fragment of metal, allegedly reveals the truth of this entire case? Okay, roses. It's obviously my armband. Uh, 
Take no, that. It's, it's, it's the jack knife. This is a knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you will see that there was a small piece of the. Uh, there's a small piece at the tip of the blade that is missing. A common issue with the inferior blades sold at unsavory street markets. Criminals who use them regularly leave the tips lodged in their victims' bones. What? Oh. What? Oh. And what of this particular knife? No doubt its tip has suffered a similar fate, now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. Objection! Objection! Bitch, you wrong. No, that's not the case. <clears throat> We're on case one. The tip of this particular knife blade is the very figure of metal we discovered in the chamber of Mr. Gary Deb's pipe. Ah! Oh! Oh! He's been Jack wounded. wounded. Good grief! Lord Van Sykes! I... I don't believe it. I felt... My Whoa. blood... My blood move once again. I'm feeling in the Jojo pose. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming from my brain. The knife from the crime scene and this fragment of metal are a perfect match. Jotaro! Jotaro! Ryonosuke! Order, order! Is, is this some sort of Eastern sorcery? <laughs> <laughs> this is no magic, my lord. This is a miracle. A miracle? So, Von Seeks has finally fi figured it out, has he? Council, explain this extraordinary coincidence at once. Yes, my lord. The crucial po uh, point we have to ask ourselves here is when did the fragment of metal find its way inside Mr. Gary Depp's pipe? Something that was clarified for us in the most recent witness's testimony. Had this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Not to clean out with one of her soft projectiles, she didn't guess. It would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Oh no! Oh, so much jiggles! Oh, dear me! Oh, he crushed the pipe. Did you see that? Oh, I didn't yeah. See that. Hold on, I, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to him. But he's like got the pipe crushed in his hand. Oh, during the argument between these two have occurred, just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mr. Gary Depp flung his uh, this knife at her husband. However, the knife missed Mr. Gary Depp, instead striking the pipe in his hand at the time. Which caused the tip to break off, of course. Good lord! Yes, and this is when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Gary Depp's pipe. The, the chance of that are a million to one! Look at, like, he's got it broken right now in his oh, hand. Oh, dang. Yeah. Oh damn, yeah. Or at least bending. I don't know. Maybe the maybe I guess the tape probably isn't good enough to fix the whole thing. And yet there's only no other credible explanation for how the tip of the blade ended up in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the knife ricocheted off the pipe and flew out of the wind open window. Ah. Uh. In short, this knife, which fell from the window of the of the Gary Depp's house, whoa! It's the very same knife that struck the victim in the middle of the back on the street below. That uh, I feel like that sentence could have had some punctuation in it. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely, yeah. definitely needs like a comma or two. Oh, oh gosh! Oh, oh dear! Oh, oh, oh! No! Oh. Oh, she's on I a just, box. What? She's what? His box. ass is covered in burn marks, by the way. No, that's 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 poop stains. Objection. Uh, 
A full body in theory, I'll give you that. A complex bouquet of seemingly trivial points, plausible arranged, plausibly arranged to create an almost passive vintage. Allow me to toast my learned friend's characteristically nipple knees approach to bottling his argument. Oi? But after all, it is just a theory. The bottle, I fear, is cold. Because you see. What? My leg! Oh. It's spoilt by an un insurmountable inconsistency. What? Ouch. Lord Van Sykes, explain yourself. What is this inconsistency you claim to have identified? An inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. The victim was found with a knife planted in the middle of her back. Yes, in her... Oh. oh no! Now it's back! That's right, you silly little man! Oh, it's coming! <laughs> now, Joan, old thing, what are you getting so excited about? Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the back and falling to the ground. In the knife that struck her, if the knife had struck her, had fallen from above. Fuck this chalice! Oh. There's no possible way it could have planted itself in the victim's back. God. Look at him, he's got like bird marks on his butt. That's <laughs> poop he does. Order, order. Quite right, you see. <coughs> you <fine>? you good? <coughs> No, I'm not good. <coughs> Too much of the dank weed. Are you okay? <coughs> I'm choking. Um, <coughs> that's exactly right. If if the knife had fallen on top from her from above, <coughs> it would have struck her on the top of her head. But that's why she bent over to grab the book. Oh, she yeah. was grabbing the book because um, it was singed and on fire. Yeah, we so when she about bent that. over the knife, yep. This lover wants to look. I knew it. I never liked this theory in the first place. And it's gone home and gave my money to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I forgot the jury was there. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, honestly. It would appear the defense has made rather a spectacular blunder. If a theory has even one inconsistency, it cannot stand. <laughs> Get it? Because she didn't. Your theory, my learned friend, is history! <gasps> oh no. We were so close. I could see the truth. I was so sure we were on the right track. But now, the way it has been blocked completely, by just one simple inconsistency. Or, in other words... That's probably Olivia. Or, in other words... Oh. We simply need to eliminate that one inconsistency, and the theory will stand. How did she- I, I read- I said that in my mind again! <laughs> I, I can hear you talking out loud, Naruhudu-san. Nar it's the spirit of the blade. <laughs> You mustn't worry, Mr. Narahudo. You were just caught off guard, that's all. And your mind went blank. But if the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. The key to this is in the court record. I'm sure all the information you need is there. We already know it. Oh. It seems you have nothing to say, my little niece friend. Nipples. Well, your silence speaks volumes. I point. Attack, attack it. A taste acceptance that your theory is fatally flawed. Tactic accepted. It wasn't Ejection. tactic though, it was missing a T. Get shit. Ooh. She just said Jackson while his head was down. Objection. Uh, this inconsistency doesn't mean I have, I was on the wrong track. I'm not doing anything by the way. 
It means that I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. Oh. It's a test! Oh. Oh. Yes! If the knife fell on the victim from above, there's no way it could have ever hit her in the middle of her back. Uh, middle of her back. Under normal circumstances, that is. What are you implying? That my nipples are hard for you. There was a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this inconsistency. That can explain how the knife fell from above and pierced the victim's back. We already knew. We already have the answer. Goodness! Oh. Goodness! Sorry. Utter, utter madness. Madness. Surely this must be the last time. Council, present the evidence of which you speak. This is the last inconsistency. The final piece in the puzzle. If I can successfully make sense of this, the truth will be laid bare at last. Save. I'm just gonna save. Look. Why? I only got two you shots, and you I gotta... save, scum. You re we already know the answer. I know what it is, but the problem is, is I don't know if I need to send, if I need to show the book or the picture of the book. The book. You're probably gonna need to do the book. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, because she threw it out the window and she picked it up. Well, right, but I'm just saying, like. What's the What's the one physical thing that would have stopped her? I'm, I'm just saying that she in this picture she's holding the book while well, this is just the book. That's all I'm just saying. I guess we book. have two options anyways. It doesn't matter. Book. But the book. Take yeah. that. Take that. Damn it, Tyler. This the fourth book found at the scene. Whoa. Ah, it's going slow. This is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. The burnt book. Is that not Mr. Gerardeb's book? Yes, and to understand the significance, we have to consider how it came to be at the scene in the first place. This photographic print clearly shows the book in question. And the victim holding it in her hand. Okay, so either or actually would have worked. But as we all now know, it was the police constable that put the book between her fingers like that. And then one. Quite so, as part of his wholesale transplanting of the crime scene to the opposite side of the road. That's true, however, as a part of his testimony, Constable Beat made an extremely enlightenment statement at the point, on that point. But he did it for basically exact. Yeah. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? Oh. Oh, stop. That's because that's how I found it. When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. Oh. So when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. Oh boy. <laughs> in other words, the victim had already picked up, uh, picked the book up on her own volition. And clearly, that must have been before she suffered the knife wound. Well, I should say so. After being attacked with a knife, I don't imagine she had been doing much at all. So the question becomes, why did the victim have that book in her hand? But, by Jingo! What? Jingo? I think I'm beginning to see what may have happened now. Oh, Terry, me. We know that the book fell from the top floor of the Gerdeb household onto the pavement below, at precisely the moment that the victim was walking past. Yes, at exactly that moment. The young woman was walking along the street in the light fog. When all of a sudden, a book fell in front of her. The book I threw. Yes, Mrs. Gary Deb. And what do you think of the thing that woman did? The woman did. What would you do if you were walking along and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavement? Well, I, I really can't imagine it. But I, I, I suppose. She might have reached out. Oh, she looks cute in this little picture. And picked up the book. Oh no! May God strike me down for picking up this book. <laughs> oh my God. 
Is that exactly what the woman, in fact, did? She picked up the book! Oh! Heavens! And when the woman reached down to pick up the fallen book up... What position would the ha uh, would her back have been in? <laughs> That's right, face in the sky, completely and utterly defenseless. Then, in the in the very next moment, while the woman was still bent over picking up the book, the next object fell from above, room above, the jackknife, straight into the middle of her back. And at the same time, walking by chance directly behind Mrs. Green was the defendant, Mrs. Suzuki Natsumi. Well, I never. It appeared to Mr. Natsumi that the woman simply collapsed on the floor. In the dark of, and the fog, she didn't see the knife falling on her from above. And from the other direction, the constable and his wife saw no one but the victim of her and her apparent attacker. So there never was a real culprit to run from the scene in the first place. No, there was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that coach uh, that cul cum uh, culminated, culminated, culminated in an unfortunate accident. Oh, and that is the real truth behind this case. Oh. Real oh. Musuke. Uh. So, the complete and utter accident. I don't think this it is, though. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Gary Deb. The very first time you showed me that knife, I... I had my suspicions. I wonder if perhaps it might have been something like that. There, there, old bean. Or Mrs. Garadab. Oh. oh. Of course, I never meant for anything of the sorts to happen, but... I mean, you threw a knife at your husband. Let's not, let's not forget that. It was all my fault, wasn't it? Oh. I take full responsibility. I let my anger get the better of me. I threw that book. And I threw the knife as well. John Deere? Alright, I know. I'm... I'm ever so sorry. Truly. I'm sorry! Thump. Oh. He's trying. We had the bad knee, though, yeah, remember? Yeah, got a really fucked up knee. Ugh. Would you were number four? What do you think? All right. <laughs> Lord Van Zykes. Oh, fuck it. <clears throat> Lord Van Zykes, what news of Mrs. Garadab? She's been taken to the infirmary. It would appear that today's events had left her in its specially flustered state. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There is no cause for concern. Yes, unbeknownst to themselves, they caused what could easily have been a terrible tragedy. They shall have to prepare themselves for the consequences of their actions. There is some good news, however, my lord. I have just had word from the hospital where the victim is being treated. Her condition is improving steadily, and the doctor believes she will regain consciousness soon. You're gonna say someone stabbed her. Yeah, I'm getting... I feel like... This is part one of the trial, 
And then case five is the second part of this trial. Right. It's strange. We've been talking about the victim all this time, but we never once met her. Oh, wonderful. The woman is out of danger, it seems. Well, somebody else goes in and stabs her again. Yes. That is good. That is good news. It's the bitch from the first case all over again. She's, just, <laughs> she's the one who stabs her. So, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Uh, um, yes. There we go. <laughs> On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. You came from your distant eastern homeland to study our great British culture and have been repaid with the immeasurable unkindness. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. Mm. <laughs> Not for me. That was wine in his face. Ellipses. <laughs> no. It is me who should be begging your pardon. Oh no, Mr. Natsumi. That evening, when the young woman just collapsed on the p <coughs> on the pavement before my eyes, I, I jumped to the wrong conclusion again. In my own confusion. What conclusion, sir? Oh, well, surely. That woman was dead. Oh. Yeah, he blames himself for running because he thought that she was dead. Yes, Constable Beat said the same thing, didn't he? He thought she had been killed too. I suppose she must have looked completely lifeless. She might be paralyzed. The blade hit her close to the spine, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yes. <laughs> paralyzed the bitch. No. Kidding. It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now, but I'm still can't get used to life here. I I can't relax. I'm sure there's an evil spirit. Lurking in the fog like they're haunting me. All right, crazy man. Get out of here. You're not guilty. Go leave Oh, Suzuki-san, his imagination really has got the better of him Yes, poor man So when it happened I thought the young woman had been taken by the fog the fog spirit I should never have. <clears throat> I should never have dropped my books like that and run away. I should have have called for help, for a doctor, for the police. Ellipses. Instead, I managed to create a rift in the relationship of the trust between of uh, our two empires. And for that, I'm truly sorry. I will commit seppuku. Oh. He did it. Wait a second. Hold on. Was Garrett Deb in the juror's seat? Did I miss that for a brief second there? Uh, I didn't see anything. I didn't either. I looked up. I looked down at my phone for a brief second because I got a message, and I looked up, and I swear I saw Garrett Deb. Uh, you're probably I, not, because he's probably trying to take care of his wife. Yeah, you're probably right. I might have been going crazy. What could indeed say that some sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think? One that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were befooled by the spirit and led to false conclusions. But thanks to Lord Van Zykes and our young lawyer here from the East, that chain has now been broken and the spirit exercised. But wait, so how is this man gonna unfortunately die? With a knife wound in his back. I'm just curious on what's gonna happen to him because of. You're assuming curse. he's gonna die, Tila. Don't assume that. You yeah, but he's gonna be cursed. I don't know. I mean, just let's let's play it and find out. I'm just I'm just I'm just theorizing. I heartily commend you both. Oh. No. 
Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yes, my lord. In concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decisions regarding the defendant's culpability. Minos! Are you ready to present your findings to the courts? <clears throat> Ask the foreman of this jury, I can assure you we've reached a fair and just conclusion. I do declare the truth can be extremely cruel at times. Yeah, he is! Look at him! Oh, he is! Okay. Well, I suspect the woman next to me, that's for sure. Sitting in old bean. In for the old bean was well, she's out of action, you know. But I know what her decision would be. Eesh. Does this mean I finally be able to get out of here and start work? Well, it's about time. <gasps> I say I'll have a corker. A corker of a story to tell the grandchildren when I get home, won't I? Very well. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby demand your final decisions. Mr. Foreman! Not guilty! Not guilty! Not guilty! Not guilty! Not guilty! Not guilty! Yoshi agrees with not guilty. Innocent! Innocent. <laughs> Did I miss something? <laughs> this is from the last time we played. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Soseki Natsumi, I hereby pronounce you... Not guilty! Well, the game had a stroke there for a second. It really froze up. Fireworks! There's fireworks! Why are there this fireworks time, in this court? This time, <laughs> we're not conflicted about this ruling. Really. Yeah, I actually feel pretty happy about this one. And finally, Mr. Natsume. Oh, yes? Yes, my lord? Sure. You are now a free man once more. It is my hope that you will continue to further your education in British culture. And may you never again be brought before me. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes, sir. Of course. On my life, I swear, I will never step foot on it in a courtroom again. Um... Transported to tears. I can't read the first word. I didn't have my glasses on. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you, councils. Court is adjourned. The February of the 20th. In the Bailey of the Old. Oh, oh look him. Uh. Wait, you mean you mean me? Of course! Is there another look on me? Uh saddle, yeah. <laughs> Is there even one? Compared to the original Locum student, Mr. Narahudo Esquire, your name has become rather short, hasn't it? What's wrong with using my actual name? Oh, at last, I'm this free! Is, oh, no, second. sorry. Oh, alas, I'm free! I'm free! Dreadful! <laughs> Jump. Go is jubilant. This jubilant and jubilant. Jubilation. Oh. Eddie, Eddie Hardy. Eddie Hardy happiness. Hurrah! There you go. Good job, Calvin. <laughs> Oh, I'm pleased. Mr. Natsume is delighted. Would it, uh, would it be so hard just to say that, then? Then just say that. Wugu, you did it! You saved me from the brink. Where? Well, what happened to the poor woman was in no way your fault, after all. I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, no, no! Not that! Lovely lawyer, the Yolkum! Lawyer! Um, yes? Da, 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 da. I mean, as I said before, I just never got used to life here in Great Ben. Every time I look over my shoulder, 
I see it foreigners. I see towering bricks buildings. And from high windows, I see them looking down on me, laughing, looking at that little hunchback. Oh dear. I'm sure it's all in your head, Mr. Natsume. But! Today, you look employer gave me gloom of the boot. You stood firm behind the uh ber uh Bernoli? Uh Baronial Baronial Branch. Baronial Branch before all those babbling British. You battle to the bitter end. Laying barren to the baffling truth. And when I beheld the blinding fireworks among the beams of the uh, Bailey's roof, I bellowed. Behold the best! Bar Barris sister? Barrister. Mr. Everborn. Well, that's very flattering, and we're very pleased for you. This has given me a wonderful uh, ad adequate to recount to my old friends back in Japan. Antidote? Antidote? Maybe? I don't know. Anecdote. 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 Yeah. Anecdote. And an antidote. Is that what you call my own? Oh, oh, this is, this is her luck. Like, Shoulders easily. Ah, there you are, my dear fellows. I apologize for keeping you waiting. I rose late this morning. Mr. Sholmes, what a pleasure to see you! I see I'm here not a moment too soon. Disaster has been averted, I'm glad to say. Oh? <laughs> the trial shall begin pres presently, Mr. Naruhoto, and I wish you the very best of luck. Ha ha ha, it's just finished. What? No! Then my haste was in vain? Uh -oh. It's It's you! Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Yep. Here! Lock Sholmes? Air Lock Sholmes? Air Lock Sholmes? Why there's a space there? It's because it's, it's he he's calling him Air Lock instead of Her Lock. <laughs> oh! And we met, sir. Um, this is Mr. Natsume, the man you had arrested, Mr. Sholmes? Never heard of him. Ah, I see. I failed to recognize you at first. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom, either of your bleak lodgings or that prison cell. I simply couldn't place that curious face in the light. Charming. Punch him. <clears throat> this is all your fault, Herlock Sholmes. You're the reason I have to go through this terrible ordeal. Kind of is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind! Uh-oh. Hee uh. <laughs> My apologies, sir. Sir, but I assure you, I have placed you. I have placed you now. You're the fellow who abandoned that poor young lady and ran off, are you not? Uh. It's kind of got you there, dude. Watch out for the whole lock. There could be a blade in there. <laughs> the, the tip of a blade, nevertheless. Had she been taken to the hospital more urgently? I feel perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Oh, damn. I mean, no? 
but it was unavoidable, I'm sure. We are but human, after all. Anyone would have been shaken by such an experience. Ooh, sick dad. <laughs> I do feel very bad about how I behaved. You should! It was terrible! Well, never mind. Now then, what was it that you wanted to say to me, sir? Can I punch your face? I, I, I mean nothing. <laughs> priceless! Oh, I'm sorry, really, but... <laughs> that was quite priceless. Push, zosuki san Still, on the bright side, you've had an extremely entertaining experience without paying a penny. And it would seem you were not even found guilty. There's no bright side. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Natsume? Even after this, um, I'm still cursed by the spirit. And. And now by that Reaper! Yeah. Yeah, the Reaper of the uh, Bailey. Or yeah, Van Zeeks. Yeah, the Reaper curse. I haven't forgotten, you know, what facing that man in court means. You dead! Even if you're found not guilty, you're still doomed! <laughs> this. We'll be all right, Mr. Natsume. Hmm? Oh. If the Reaper appears trying to make trouble, I will protect you. Why? <laughs> <laughs> With a perfectly ex ex executed Susano takedown. Much as I like being turned on my head, a bit of warning might be nice next time, Mr. Sato. <laughs> so, Mr. Natsumi, what do you intend to do now? You mentioned something about re recounting your experiences to your friends back in Japan. Dot, dot, dot. Yes! I intend to return to my homeland soon. Oh! It's, it has already been a year since I arrived here in Great Britain. I visit on... Verse... Universities. Universities. I'm so disappointed that. Libraries, bookshops, I've been honing, honored, honored with the taglets of professional privilege. I learned so much about the wealth of literature here and the city it has shaped. And I've come to realize that it is my calling to sit home, tell my fellow countrymen about it. Oh man, so Seki and uh, Lord Van Zykes are doing JoJo poses together. Hell yeah. Not gonna be able to go home and tell his people at all. Nope. That's very touchy, Mr. Natsume. Oh, she's I, oh. I apologize. Or, in perhaps less veiled terms, you wish to withdraw halfway around the world to escape the terror of the Reaper's Curse? That's not it at all! Maybe some of it. <laughs> the more I learn of literature, the more the strange feeling claws at my insides. I feel compelled to return to my roots and attempt to end a workout on my own. On on my own. Oh, I see. A work of literature by Susuki san could be an interesting read. Miss Susano and yourself, Mr. Naruto. Sorry? What about us? 
<clears throat> Will you return to Japan alongside your mustached compatriots? Why would we? A week has not passed since we've arrived in London. And only now does it feel as though we've finally found our feet. And you are accommodated in a hotel at present, are you not? That's right, but we need to find lodging before it bankrupts us. I've calculated we can only afford another ten nights before our entire budget is exhausted. Well then, you could take my lodgings. Uh... Oh, the windowless room. Ah, uh, but that is lacking in, in windows, but more than mix up uh, with floors, a ceiling, and walls. I got mean, here's the point. Yep, got a good point there. Great. Of course, I'll be happy to leave behind the accused evil spirit. Is he talking about the cat? <laughs> Might be. <laughs> Oh my, an evil spirit? Oh yes. <laughs> to suff suffocate you, you while you sleep. It's the cat. <laughs> it is a little wake up call. <laughs> Speaking of a cat, I have one on. Well, think about it. If that's all right, we'll think about it. If that's all right. Fuck yeah! I want to sleep. I want to have this cat. This cat was awesome. Perhaps I can the offer a more welcome gizmo. alternative. Would you consider taking lodgings with me? Really? She just she just exploded. Oh, <laughs> Everything God. her mind just went for a second. Well, vacancy has conveniently presented itself, though it is up in the attic. I'm are you sure it's just a storage loft? I spoke with the landlady this very morning on the matter of price, and Iris is cleaning the room as we speak. You must come at once. I presume you have no luggage to speak of. Oof. This is simply wonderful! What an honor to be invited to take lodgings in the Great Detective's office attic! Office is attic. <laughs> I'm, I'm too overcome for words. So suggesting we ever we look elsewhere is out then. Yep. Pretty much. Then it's settled. Iris will prepare a welcome dinner this evening. And you must come too, Mr. Natsume. I insist. I I I I don't know what to say. But thank you. Yes. But the eat but the evil spirit. Wonderful. Then let's go then. Whoa. Then I'll go and complete the paperwork for your formal release, Mr. Natsume. It sha shan't take long. Susano Susano punch! punch. Susano <laughs> punch. Somebody's happy. Welcome. Don't you dare call me that. <laughs> Alright. I, I knew that you wouldn't let me down. I truly delighted to have met you here in London. Are you now? Likewise, Mr. Really? Natsumi. It's been a pri privilege meeting you too. Has it really? It's a shame that we're going to have to say goodbye so soon. Is it a shame? Well, I'll come to realize that I belong in Japan. Well, welcome. We'll meet again one day. We will? Yes, I'm sure. In your grave. And hopefully by then, I'll be a successful lawyer. Hopefully by then, I'll be a successful, successful author. Nice. Well, my dear fellow, our carriage appears to have arrived. Shall we go, Mr. Naruto? Yes, Mr. Sholmes. I have little doubt Mr. Natsume will be released in time for dinner this evening. And so, with Susuke san's in innocence successfully established, we rode with Mr. Sholmes to what was to become our new home, 221B Baker Street. Look, cutscene? Oh, no. <gasps> Is that their home? 
the 20th of the Febu February of the 20th at the 41.4 p.m. Boom, hey, yeah. the attic. <laughs> Shovel. <laughs> oh, no, there's a ladder. Oh, <laughs> a it's actually a step ladder, Jordan. But, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so this. Step ladder, what are you doing? I need help. <laughs> is, is to be our new office. Yes. Aw, uh, office? I rather like the sound of that. Me too! It's simply wonderful, isn't it? I hope you can see this, Kazuma. It's only a small step. No, it's a step ladder, actually. <laughs> I like to think we're getting a little closer to your dream now. Oof. <laughs> so, my dear fellows, do you like the place? Whoa! Oh, whoa! Whoa! Oh, Mr. Sholmes! Yes, thank you so much. He's hot! <laughs> oh no, he's hot. Oh no, he's, he's hot! hot. <laughs> it's a delightful room, Mr. Sholmes. I simply adore it. Dude, I prefer you Sheldon. without the hat on. Can I sniff you? <laughs> <laughs> he looks so young. Right? Good. I'm I mean, he's to like, what, 26? Thirty-four. Oh, <laughs> sorry, my Good. bad. I'm pleased to hear it. Iris and I are delighted to welcome you. Oh, she's so adorable. I hope everybody's hungry. It's nearly time for dinner. That's right. I gave her a higher pitched yeah, voice. Yes, you tried to give her a higher uh, southern voice. Yeah. We'll eat soon as Mr. Natsume arrives. So we have a lot to celebrate. Wait, he ain't, come, he ain't come with us. Oh. He wasn't released quite yet. He gone. Yeah, he's he's dead. Iris, you must let me help you. All right then, Susie, you can be in charge of the salad. Uh. Uh. Splendid. Why do you have a Simon Says on your gun? It's my salad maker gun. What are you talking <laughs> about? Blue is ranch dressing. <laughs> <laughs> green is to oh, prepare the no. lettuce. Blue is blue cheese, you idiot. Green is oh, oh, you're right. ranch dressing. No, green is the salad. <laughs> so, Mr. Naruhoto, how does it feel? To have your own office in the capital. Oh, wait a second. Was that the last case of the first game? Uh, yeah. Because... It's very exciting, actually. They told <laughs> us that uh, when we went to switch his outfit that it only would affect the second game. And this was his other outfit. Maybe then? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. His other outfit is a traditional Japanese outfit. You're right. He's got the mask on. He's got the kitsune mask Yes. On. I can't help but wondering what adventure awaits us. <laughs> Those were precisely my sentiments when I first established my office at these premises. Until I discovered the dark truth about the city of London, that is. Sorry. London is a glorious place, full of wonder, opportunity, prosperity, and mirth. But the brightest of lights casts the darkest of shadows. Whoa. No what? Space. Shadows? What do you mean? Heart light, dark bark. Well, I ah. believe you're well aware of the murkiness that lies behind London's facade already. So, once again, Mr. Narahoda. Adieu. Welcome to London. Of course, at the time, I had no idea of the significance of those words. Mr. Sholmes so casually spoke. <gasps> but it wasn't long before my turn came. Are they foreshadowing? And see the true death of the murk that lay behind it. Because this is how he talked. This is how he talked about. Uh, um... Ray, oh God, our friend Kazuma's son before he died. Yeah, I'm guessing that's what it is. Oh no! Huh. Herlock? Herlock better not fucking die. I'm telling you that now. If he dies, I'm ending the game. <laughs> telling you Save that <laughs> right now. <laughs> I mean, we've got time to at least get through the first part of it. No, 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 we should definitely. Oh no, episode five: the adventure yeah. of the unspeakable story. 
Oh. Oh. The, the Venture of Arn's Beagle Story. The Hound, the Hound of, of the, the Baskervilles. The... This is the second game. Yeah, okay. The Hound, it's... The hound, a hound at war, but not such a hound as any mortal has ever seen. Its eyes glowed with a smoldering glaze. The whole of its oxized body, or the whale of its oxized body, was outlined in white hot flames. What is episode V? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Woo! We did it. I right. completed it. Yeah. All right. We're going to call that the stream just because, I mean, like, we theoretically could go for another couple hours, but I think uh, it, since we just finished the case, we should call it there. Yeah. Yeah. Good place to stop. Yeah. So, thank you everybody for watching, and we'll see you again under the Mistroll Adventure. Ciao. Bye, everybody.